Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 40K Badcast. It's the 2018 NovaCast. My name is Dan Boyd, and I'm joined by Campbell McLaughlin. Campbell, we don't have time for jokes. <laughs> About I'm to say, sorry. I know you're in a rush, or else you wouldn't have used my given name. There are There is zero time for jokes. It is going to be a packed episode, y'all. A lot happened. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna dive right into it, and I'm gonna start because I did some pre Nova things this year, and I talked a little bit about it in episode 36 because episode 36 was uh, I, what recorded Eve of Nova. <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah. the same day as the preview. It was like an hour before the preview event, so if we recorded it like two hours later, we could have scooped people. We, we would have oh well. scooped everybody. Oh man, shucks. So I just want to talk about the painting class I went to in a little more detail. Uh, Roman Lepat's beginning or beginner's painting class, and dude, this this thing was great. Uh, it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the week uh, the, during the week of Nova, uh, and I had so much fucking fun. I learned so much. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, listeners, then you have seen the demonette that I painted there. I have never painted something so thoughtfully before i sh- i guess like <laughs> it, it, where where it's like there's a lot of times when i'm just like slapping paint on and be like ah it's that that's okay that that sure that works but with this one it was like i'm paying attention to light and where the light hits the model and shadows and all the stuff and learned a ton about wet blending mm. which takes forever to do but boy oh boy does it yield beautiful models so it was sunday night uh, or sunday afternoon rather 4 to 10 p.m and uh, we started making our display board or display base rather and learned a lot about theory, like color theory, light theory, all the stuff that Roman was teaching about how to you know, frame your model. And a few friends were in the class. John Hello. Steining, everybody's favorite John Steining was was there. He, he painted the Titan that was the warlord. Right? Yeah, yeah. He painted Ooh. the warlord that I didn't win, though. I should have won. You were robbed, just, clearly. I, I clearly robbed, yeah. By chance. Uh, uh, Nova board member Owen Best, who's a friend of mine, uh, was in there. I got, actually got to sit next to him the whole class, too. He was really good. Mm. Uh, he even put his demonette model in Capital Palette, which I was going to do, but I forgot it when we were leaving my apartment. <laughs> Whoops. Good job. And then uh, listener Andrew Smallman, a.k.a. LT, was there, too, and it was great to hang out with him. Uh, then on Monday, it was a 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. class, and we did did the basing, and which my base, uh, you've seen it. It's like yeah. a like a marriage arch for my demonette, and it's extremely elaborate. But we did the basing, we painted that up, and we started work on the demonette. And then on Tuesday, it was a 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. class, and, and, uh, three long days of painting, uh, and finished the model, and it was really cool. So I have a couple, just a couple of takeaways real quick. So I learned that you can just kind of do whatever with these display models. Like pick a color, pick a contrasting color or a complementary color and just go for it and see what happens. Uh, Same with basing. It's a one-off. You don't need to worry about being consistent across an entire army so you can kind of go nuts. Precisely. And basing, like just freestyle it. Like for for my display base on that, I just sort of, I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I just started I grabbed some milliput or whatever it's called and like slapped it on there and started sticking things in. And I was like, oh, wait, this, oh, oh, here's an idea. (laughs) And made a marriage arch with a slate stone pathway and a bunch of fallen leaves and a pumpkin. Like it it just worked out really well. I didn't plan that at all. Uh, But like color, the whole color idea, the color wheel and color complements and contrasts and lighting, let light be your guide for how like the model is like what's what's brighter, what's darker, that sort of stuff. And just really, really cool class. I I would I think I said this on the on the last show. I, I, I would definitely like to take another class from him. Probably not the same class. But a, a different, a more focused class on like uh, uh, OSL. I'd love to take an OSL class because mm. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But <laughs> really cool, really cool time. And listeners, if you get the opportunity to take one of Roman Lepat's classes, do it. It'll it'll help you out so much with your. Painting. Would you say a painting class is a good way for you to maintain your edge? Ooh, <laughs> you know, I didn't do a lot of edge highlighting at all on that model. About to say that isn't what the focus of that class was. No, no, it was more like wet blending and lighting and color. Is any of, 
I mean, of course, like you're gonna, you've gained new tools to put in your toolbox, and some of these aren't necessarily viable across an entire army. But yeah. do you think there's any techniques you learn from this that you want to try to reproduce in yes. the future, whether it's on army scale or whatever? Yes, glazing, specifically glazing, which, so I bought a bunch of stuff at Nova, and one of them was Slate Mardana and his dog, Macula, mm. and who's painted up like a Doberman. And Dobermans have that fade on their feet and face uh, yeah, that goes yeah. that brown to black fade. Yeah, black and tan sort of look. And I f- figured out how to do that. Nice. So I, when I start painting up macula for Slate Mordana, I'm, I'm going to glaze that black, go from brown to black like that. And, you know, we'll we'll see how it works. <laughs> it's going to be kind of a... Kind of a learning experience, but yeah, look, looking forward to that. So glazing there, there's, uh, I'm working on a Primaris librarian right now, and I've got, been using some of the techniques uh, as far as like lighting met- metallics. Mm-hmm. Like where, where should you put the highlights of your metallics? And the answer, at least according to Roman, is where the light hits them. Okay. Uh, so working on that. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try a little bit of glowy action on his outstretched hand uh, for, you know, like. So it looks like a psychic spell is happening in his so, hand, in his palm. A little, little bit of OSL going on there. Yeah, but like very minor and keep it just to the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Honestly, that's probably a good way to start. I'd probably, if you really want to do some kind of basics with OSL, if you just got a base like and had some texture on it and just kind of like picked out one spot and just kind of radiated outwards from there to make it look like a spotlight's on that, just to kind of get that feel and yeah. just kind of get that idea down. I have an idea of how I'm going to do it, but I, I'm going to have to figure it out as I as I do it. But we will talk more about that model next show, because I'll probably be done with it by the time we record next show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's move on to the rest of Nova. You mean the start of Nova? The start, <laughs> AKA the start of Nova Wednesday. So a couple a couple things happen on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. First off, I picked you up from the airport and I'm calling it now Primaris Reagan Airport. I'm so happy that joke stuck. <laughs> For those who don't know, there's just a slightly larger than he really should be Ronald Reagan on the way into Reagan International Airport. He's like an eight foot tall bronze <laughs> Ronald Reagan just standing in the median between your cars. I'm like, oh, that's Primaris Reagan. <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not exactly life size. He's larger than life. Whole, but not a Iron lot, Reagan there. But not a lot larger than life, like no. just larger than life enough to be like, huh, that's a little off putting, isn't it? <laughs> Those teeth are about the size of my thumb, aren't they? <laughs> oh, no. But uh no, Reagan International Airport isn't too bad. I got off there and um spoiler alert, you might be able to tell because I'm saying a little na- nasally, I got sick like I do at every fucking convention. That being said, I think I found out why. And why I get sick and you don't. And it's not just because of my soy boy beta male physique <laughs> and you being built kind of like a Mack truck. Um, so I always get sick because I fly. And you don't to Nova. But, you know, it's like when we went to Adapticon, I got sick. You didn't. But when I go to Nova, I almost always do. And it's because uh, I actually read this on Washington Post this morning. At airports, the uh, the bins that you just like put your shit into for the security checkpoint, oh. those don't get washed oh. ever. And like some institute, and in, I think Sweden did or did a study on them, and they are fifty percent dirtier than the toilets in the airport. Oh. So if you've ever picked one wow. of those up, and then I don't know, had an itch on your face, or scratched your eye, or oh, no. picked your tooth, or whatever, congratulations, you might have E. coli. <laughs> Jesus, fuck! I've never thought about that. Those things have to be filthy. Yeah, they're foul. So um, they're recommending they put. Purell dispensers at the beginning and end of security checkpoints, oh, checkpoints, checkpoint, Jesus Christ. Check and uh, yeah, so uh, next time I fly, I am going to have Purell on me and I'm going to wash my hands immediately afterwards and not yeah. touch myself whatsoever ever in the interim because I guarantee it's why I keep getting sick because like I go to PAX and PAX East has like 60 something thousand people and this had like 3000 and that's still a lot of nerds that I'm bumping up against and high fiving and so on. But at PAX, I never get sick. And it's because I don't fly. I went to PAX and. In- Last time I went to PAX was like 2014, and Mm -hmm. on Saturday, me and my friend showed up, and there was like a, I want to say like a half mile line to get in, because we showed up early on Saturday, Mm -hmm. and so we, like, our cab dropped us off right at the front of the convention center, and we had to walk down this entire line of people waiting to get in, and I was doing the good game thing, Mm -hmm. good game, and doing high fives for everybody, but I had on gloves, because it was freezing cold out, (laughs) because PAX is held in the middle of winter for whatever fucking reason. (laughs) Yes, it is. 
but yeah, so I didn't get sick because of that. But that's that's really good information for people to think about. Yeah, there you go. You're learning with the 40K Badcast. Learn from my mistakes. Let my body be thrown on the altar of education so you people can learn something from me getting sick all the fucking time. Unfortunately, you didn't have the Nova Swag Purell that no, was given given with you right at that moment. Because uh, uh, let's, let's talk about the swag bags real quick before we get on into too much other stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this I really have, I have swag. KR2 bag and fidget spinner because <laughs> that's really all I care about. I'm guessing the fidget spinner is because like in the year of our Lord 2018, no one's buying them anymore. So they're able to get like a fuckload of them for oh, a dollar. These fidget spinners light up my dude. They, they do and light up. I have played it. I've started a new game where uh-huh. I light them up, get them blinking and spin them and then point it at my cats who are mesmerized by it. Ooh, I was going to ask if uh, Minnie or Pigs has any interest in the fidget spinner. Minnie likes to spin it. You can put it on the ground and she'll and she'll bat at it and spin it. But yeah, the KR2 bag, which, oh, okay, well, I have already two KR backpacks, which hold yes. two, and I have a KR3, yes. and now I have a KR2. I, you can now carry year, nine KR cases on you. Next year, if we do Supernova again, I'll have another KR3. Sweet. So, well, you wear one backpack on your back. You wear one on your chest, kind of like a baby Bjorn, and then you have a KR three in each hand, and you are just an absolute unit of foam. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be protected from anything. Hard cases to protect your soft body. They gave us a shirt that I'm never gonna wear. Oh yeah, it's orange. I don't wear orange. Yeah, orange really brings out the jaundice in my complexion. <laughs> It'll clash with your kind of reddish hair too. Yet what there is of it. Uh, <laughs> that being said, there was the 30th anniversary Marine, which was coincidentally on sale at like every booth. Yeah. And never saw any of those move. But you know what? Nope. It's a lovely model. And there's been like two or three times where I've picked it up at a store and been like, I'm going to get this in a swag bag eventually. And yeah. what do you know? I was prescient. But uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a second one. Yeah. Cool. Are you going to do anything cool. cool with him? Like maybe convert him into a cool lieutenant or something? I don't know. I, I, I we can, we can talk about. Well, sure. No, I haven't. Because I like my my uh, plans right now, post Nova plans is I'm working on this primaris librarian, and then I'm gonna do a bunch of Necromunda stuff and Blood Bowl mm. stuff. I'm yeah. gonna take a short break from uh, working on Raven Guard. So no, I, I haven't thought about that yet. He's he's, I mean, he's cool. It's it's a good model, uh, but I, I mean, I already have one. So I th- yeah. I think I was probably just gonna hold on to it until. You know, inspiration strikes. That's fair. Well, uh, speaking of inspirational, there's also that Forge World Trader Librarian figure in there with like the oh, cloud yeah. of demon smoke coming out yeah. of him. And I have no idea what to do with him, but that model's dope as hell. There are a lot of clouds of demon smoke at Nova, if you <laughs> get what I mean. Well, so we picked up our swag bags. Ooh, uh, uh, I, there's one more thing in the swag bag I want to oh, touch on. Go for it, please. Uh, because we're so supernovas, we got the personalized combat gauge by TNT oh, Laserworks, yeah. which has like all the measurements, which is cool. Although I'll admit, seeing my name right over a measurement for three inches feels like a savage own. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. That's good. That's a good joke. I still use my rubber combat gauge. The I mean, one it, that I bought that everybody gave me shit about for buying. Because it's great. Because you can like fling it in there and it bounces off models and doesn't hurt them. For a second, I thought about getting the night combat. Okay, you know what? We're doing this right now. Speaking of flinging things and hurting models. Oh, no. (laughs) You're calling me out. You're calling me out. (laughs) It's a call out podcast again. So, listeners, Campbell does this amazing thing when he rolls dice where he hurls them skyward and allows them to fall wherever they may on the table (laughs) uh, with, with, with zero regard for what may be under them. And, Campbell, we have to do something about this. I can't help it. I'm a theatrical soul. You can help it. You don't have to roll dice like that. I mean, when I have a full fistful, I don't roll with a flourish. I just kind of let it go. Oh, God. I, it's I just, just when I have one or two, and there's a lot of drama. A, we played a doubles game, and you were murdering not only your models, not only my models, but Scott and Katie's models also, which that's, well, we'll talk about that game more. But, but you know, next time ne- at Adepticon, or or if I, if I don't see you before, I might have to buy you a dice tower or something, dude. Oh, my God. Anyways, okay, One let's, let's talk about, uh, okay, so we, we, we I picked you up from Primaris Reagan Airport, we mm-hmm. ate some food, we recorded a show, and then we went to the GW preview event, 
where much was revealed, and I'm just going to go through it. I'll say not that much was revealed because Speed Freaks was supposed to be the big reveal. <laughs> right. Well, that's the first thing. They they started out with October, which mm-hmm. is going to be Speed Freaks, the the boxed game that everybody is pretty excited about, especially Orc players. Uh, but then something uh, for October that I was actually excited about is the War Boss on the Death Killer War Trike. What's your favorite thing about that model? Because for me, it's the tiny wheels just for popping wheelies in the back of the engine. <laughs> the wheelies. That model's dope as hell. I, I like the I like the the war, war boss has some sick fucking abs on him, which <laughs> I've never really seen abs. A, a lot of orcs kind of have pot bellies, but not this war boss. He's got sick fucking abs. <laughs> Oh, ab rip a face killer. Yeah, that's a really cool model. It's a war boss with a power claw on a big giant tricycle, not tricycle, but trike, you know, motorcycle, three three wheel death machine. Yeah, uh, with a driver and it's festooned with guns and power claws and all sorts of cool shit. Just a great model. Really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, they talk about the new codex. that's going to be coming out in October. Uh, and I know that the orc players are are slavering. Just, As well, just, they should be. Just all sorts of saliva everywhere over well, that thing. And, you know, I think that, I, I don't know about you, man, but, like, when orc players are happy, like, I'm happy. I'm like, I'm like, you know what, fellas, good for you. Yeah, no, orc players have dealt with a lot of long waits for good codices and short times with good codices. <laughs> um, so I'm happy to give them the benefit of the doubt. And they're always yeah. the people who seem to be having the most fun with it. Like, yeah. Greggles is beautiful orcs. I think um, during his games, I think at least once I... Saw him rolling, and he was using that new daka 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 rule. Yes, yeah, uh, which where they just explode sixes, which yeah. is anything with the word explode in it is already pretty orky. So no, it's pretty solid. It's a it's a great opportunity for orc players, and I'm sure that we're going to get some uh, really cool uh, rules and really cool th- uh, stratagems and things mm-hmm. that they get to do. And, I'm, yeah. and I'm, you know what, I'm happy for them. It's like it's like the opposite of Tau players. <laughs> like when Tau players get cool shit, I'm like, man, fuck these motherfuckers. Great. But when now it comes I'm to work players, are even longer. I'm patting them on the back. I'm like, hell yeah, you guys shine on, you crazy diamonds. Solidarity, brothers. All right, so we got a an update for the Sisters of Battle. They showed us the heads that they're working on, mm-hmm. uh, which were pretty cool. I thought they were really neat. I mean. When you're seeing them in renders, I feel like you don't really get everything because when they showed these and when they showed the weapons uh, previously, I kind of got that same feeling you get when you see some, you know, it's like, oh, we are heretical labs industries and these are our third party models. And you just see renders of them. And until you kind of see them in the flesh, what there is of it, it kind of doesn't feel real as well. It shouldn't. So I'm still kind of. What, I'm like, these are cool, but I know they're going to look better in plastic because yeah, they're much, designed to be in plastic. I'm much more uh, interested in seeing them painted, like yeah. see what the, the heavy metal team can do with them. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, there's some there's some good expressive faces in there, but, you know, it's, it's really, just gray plastic. Yeah, it's not even gray plastic. It's gray. <laughs> it's, uh, it's gray. It's gray ZBrush. It's gray PNGs. <laughs> yeah. But I like the one with the half open visor. I think that's a really cool touch. Yes. And I like the kind of grumpy nun looking one. Yes. There's also For, a, a gas mask uh, lady in there who who I was like, hey, that's cool. But uh, in addition to that, they're getting a beta codex in the chapter proof book that will come out, I think, in December. Yeah, which is cool. And on Rob, if you're listening, I'm actually going to buy this chapter of Proofs. Because <laughs> he was giving me some shit for not having the 2017 one. The missions are good in the 2017. Anyways, uh, so yeah, that's good. That, that's going to cover all of the current rules and models for mm-hmm. Sisters of Battle, uh, which tells me that they're going to be adding a bunch to it. Uh, Better to the line, Which, hey, great. Uh, they also showed the Night Preceptor. And, yeah. and the Hector Hector Rex is his name. Yeah, right? yeah they Hector gave us actual release. Not Hector Rex. That's for... that's an Inquisitor. His name is Hector, but it's spelled real dumb. Uh, <laughs> and but he's in Canis Rex. Is his that's the thing. King King Dog King Wolf whatever. Yep. Uh, they they showed us that, and they also showed us the Night Transfer Sheet. When I mean, there was a funny moment, uh, they called it the <laughs> House Griffin. Uh, House Griffith, yeah. Griffith, rather, uh, transfer sheet. And uh, Duncan Rhodes, everybody's favorite uh, uh, internet fella, was there. And he came out up to the middle and, like, uh, threw his hands up and fell to his knees. And it was, yeah, it was he like was like bowing funny. in worship for the projector, <laughs> and uh, that ruled. And then he ran off. And of course, you hear like one show in the back go, two thin coats. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's the guy. We know. Yeah, we, we know. We got it. Uh, they previewed Kill Team Command roster, which is going to be a web based army builder oh, yeah. for yeah, Kill Team. Like- which I think actually creating a Kill Team roster can be a pain in the butt. 
because you got to have like 20 guys and only so many can be specialists and you can only pick three specialists per mission plus your leader. Like there's, there's kind of a lot to think about uh, with that. So I think that would be a very useful tool. You know, any tools that help people play the game and make the game easier, I'm all for. And you know, I'm not like excited for it because I'm not, you know, that into kill team. And if I was, it's just a bit of software, but you know what? It's cool. I'm happy they're putting that kind of support out there. Uh, so they also talked about comics. Turn signals oh, on a yeah. land raider is returning. Yeah, which is like, that's, I mean, I don't know if you ever read the original when it was out, and it's basically a bunch of dad jokes with some, <laughs> you know, with some kind of quaint, like, webcomic 1.0 art. And the new one they put out there, I'm like, yeah, this is exactly the same. And you know what? I've got nothing bad to say about it. You know, yeah, it's, neither do I. I've, it, I, it's not part of my hobby nostalgia. Uh, but a, I understand that it's part of a lot of people's hobby nostalgia. It's a bit of my hobby nostalgia. I saw the artist for it. Uh, he was there, and he got to you know, he say hi. And, looks like a game dad. He looks he looks just like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I saw him in the lounge, and I wanted to go talk to him, but I was in the middle of a conversation circle, and I was kind of bummed I didn't get a chance to say hi to the guy. But, you know, I'm happy it's back. That's swell. It's, uh, it's and then Sarah Kaiser gets to uh, stretch her artistic might some more. With a an official comic from Games Workshop called Vain Glorious. Fuck yeah, she does. Have you read the first one yet? No, I ha- is it up? Yeah, they put the first one out like the next day. It's oh, you shit. know just a single four panel comic sort of thing. I hope they branch out from that comic for from that layout more, just because I know she can do some really cool stuff with layouts. But you know what? I'm thrilled to bits that she's getting to do this stuff like full time for them, and the art's beautiful. If you God, like Eagle Ordinary, it's the be same. So fucking busy, dude. She is. She absolutely is. She's got to have zero fucking time for anything because her art is fantastic and it's fucking everywhere. Yeah. I really hope they collect this into a like a paid page, a uh, trade paperback down the line, down the line, because I'd love to actually have a hard copy of this sort of stuff. Oh, I'd buy an art book of just her art. Oh, yeah, I would like too. Like Warhammer. I'd, I'd 100% buy that. They sell prints of her stuff at, uh, or at least they sold prints of her stuff at the Warhammer store in Texas, the one that just opened, the big old one, the cafe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and she was, like, signing it and all that stuff, and she drew the cafe chalkboard art up there and stuff, too. Too bad I have to literally be paid to go into Texas. <laughs> I'll go there for work at least once a year, but I'm not going on my own. The Lone Star is not shining on Dan. Anyway, so comics, very cool on both fronts there. Uh, then they talked about War- Warhammer Alt- Underworld's Night Vault, which is, I guess, an expansion to Shadespire. Yeah. Though I, th- I think it's like Shadespire was like the first phase of Warhammer Underworlds, and now we're moving into Night Vault, which is like season the, two. The season two. And they introduced the Night Haunt Warband. Mm-hmm. And holy fuck, Campbell. Like, I, okay. Night on Bald Mountain from Fantasia, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Like, that that video was very formative for me. So the aesthetic of, like, ghosts flying around and looking all see-through and uh, ethereal, like, that's, that's a very strong aesthetic for me. And they are killing it with the Night Haunt in AOS. And, but I'm not going to start AOS. I, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I'm not going to do it, but you know what I can do? I can paint seven fucking ghosts. Yeah, you can paint seven spoopy boys. I can paint seven ghosts and play some fucking Shadespire. Yeah, no, I mean... Or or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, Shadespire, Nightfall, whatever. But introduces magic to the game, which wasn't there before. But I'm really interested to see where this keeps going. I think the Shadespire figures are the best individual... Some of the best individual models they've released maybe ever. Like, I'd put them up there with, you know classic metal sculpts that you'd get one to a blister because they have that much character and are that distinctive by and large like even your basic skeleton warrior is a distinctive model when those come out yeah there's a guy holding his own head yeah that guy rules the uh Uh, the the banshee the banshee with the vines with the roses and the vines oh my god dude that's an incredible miniature the (sighs) magic stormcast opposite them are good but they don't like that exciting but stormcast like like marines and stormcast both if, if they're not your Marines, you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. they're not yours, they're kind of like, hey, Marines, cool. But these fucking, these ghosts, man, I'm I'm all about them. I, I, ooh, I don't want to start a new project, but. but you know, I, a, a project much, of seven models, I think you, you can probably handle that. Yeah, but, but it's seven models, and it's like then cards, and it's learning everything, and you have, yeah. to, it's, you have to learn what every warband, it's a whole mental is hard. thing. Yeah, well, it gets harder when you get older. 
This is true. You're younger than me, so maybe you can still learn. But for me, my it's brain is already for, full. It's, it's too late for old man Dan. Okay, Can't so learn no more games. They also teased something for Age of Sigmar, uh, Realm of Chaos, I think it was called, which had a very Slaneshi voiceover. Yeah, and they a, they had a you know a Ken Burns slow scroll over some <laughs> artwork, which. Didn't really tell us what was going on, though. I I feel like they're gonna be maybe putting out some Slanesh models soon, which is the 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 Chaos God that they haven't done a re-release uh, for their range yet. So mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, right? it's yeah, it's like called like Exaltation and you know Excoriation or whatever the fuck. It's Corn and Slanesh. It seems to be a they're gonna be doing two. It seems like they're gonna be two, doing two of these sort of old school Realm of Chaos books covering. Uh, two gods at a time, and this one looks like it's going to be corn and Slanesh centric, but they did say it's going to play into 40k as well, so we'll be seeing, you know, demon that's, you can use in both games, you know. So I'm, I'm you very excited games. to see with what they come up with for the new Slanesh demons, if they make new models. They are going to be. That's the That seems to be the big drop there. Hopefully they don't pull a creature caster and put 20 tits on the model. How would you feel if they gave them 20 dicks? I... I, th- I th- I think like a bouquet feel, of dicks. I think I'd feel the same, uh, which which is to say, you know, not interested. Mm-hmm. So, but that's just me. You know, some people love tits and dicks on their models. That's what Kingdom me. Death is for, apparently. I'm okay with that, without it. Uh, but, oh, uh, they released a bunch of stuff for, for the rebranded, I guess, Middle Earth strategy battle game. Which is yeah. A fucking mindful. Again, I have no personal interest in playing that game, but I'm so happy Adam Troke gets to keep working yeah. on it. <laughs> he, they brought they brought Adam Troke, who's the designer for it, up at the preview event, and he was just all smiles, and you could tell that he was super enthusiastic about about the Middle Earth strategy battle game, and he, he seems like such a nice guy. He's the one who oh, taught yeah. us how to play Necromunda last Nova, mm-hmm. so I, I, I'm I also on the boat with you there. Yeah. I'm just so happy that he gets to work on his project. And, I, you know, it's a full redo of the rules. It's like, it's basically third edition Lord of the Rings. Yeah, which is, you know, that's cool. And, and I the, saw people playing Lord of the Rings at the Nova. Lord of so. the Rings, uh, well, there's like a huge Lord of the Rings uh, uh, community here in Northern Virginia. That's and, so strange to me. Yeah, I right? <laughs> but they still play it and they still love it and they and they have like amazing custom boards mm-hmm. i don't know if you got a chance to walk around there but the, the I boards did are briefly yeah yeah there's like a, a, a smaug's chamber full of gold there's an mm-hmm. amazing like uh the, what do you what was the, the forest that the dwarves and the hobbits went through in that one film murkwood is it murkwood yeah, they murkwood really forest. good murkwood board yeah it's really really cool stuff uh so also they uh talked about Community approved events. Yeah, it seems they've kind of been doing this already, but now there's an official stamp, and I honestly would put it on par with the old like Rogue Trader tournament stamp. Yeah, I, I have in my notes here. I have dot dot dot. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't really know. Like I, I guess they're just they're. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why it matters. Yeah, you know, it's. I guess it's just what they're obviously putting there might behind that's the kind of stuff that's going to have better prize support that's the kind of event where you're going to see gw people around and have yeah. free events and so on yeah. it's a it's a useful shorthand although it isn't necessarily that exciting no but nova, i, feel like they, I yeah. guess is the first community approved event so yeah that's cool good for nova all right and here's the last thing they talked about and i'm actually very excited about it mm. warhammer quest blackstone fortress it's the first time warhammer quest is going into 40k which is super neat and I don't know what's going to be in it. They didn't show really anything aside from a little bit of a voiceover no. from but they some talked, quiz or something. But they talked guy. about the models. Yes. They were, they're up there in their smug fucking faces being like, oh, that Eldar Ranger in the box is really cool. Oh, these new Chaos Marines are really cool. And everybody's like, Aah! Yeah, that being said, Alex Jonesing all over the place. That being said, everybody's pulling on a full, um, like... Never, I don't have an Alex Jones reference off the top of my head. I'm sorry. He is no longer significant because he's been banned from Twitter. He's, he's gone. Um, he's gone. He's he dead. Scream, he just screams a lot. Somebody linked me he just a just screams supercut. into the void. Somebody linked me a supercut of him just screaming, and it was the funniest fucking thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Well, either way, the whole crowd would go into one of those full-on one-person shouting matches every <laughs> single time. Anything came up on screen. Oh, like God. It'd be, Warhammer 40,000, just the fucking logo, the same logo that's been there for like 25 years. And everyone's like, oh, my fucking God. And I'm like, all right, let them talk. 
the, the mics are really quiet. Let yeah, them it's, talk. it's, it's, okay, maybe I'm just old and shitty, but it's one of these situations where I would rather everybody go into the room and just be quiet the entire time and like applaud at the end or something and just let yeah. them get through it so we can like go drink or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, cause it was every time anything happened, it was like cheers and screaming and people running around and uh, like, I, it's, I listen to a lot of podcasts, especially when I'm painting, right? Mm -hmm. And like live podcasts, you know, a lot of times uh, Flophouse podcast, which is a great podcast, very, very funny. Uh, they just did a recording of a live podcast that they recorded here in D.C. Uh, because one of the podcasters had a baby. Okay. So he's, you know, taking, a, taking the two weeks or whatever off and it's a live podcast. And the problem is with a lot of these live events is that, you know, the guys up there, they're going to pander a little bit. Yeah. You know, they're going to be like, oh, we're here at Nova. And everybody's like, Whoa, oh my God, you're here. And it's, and it's just like, come on, man. Yeah. Can we not? Well, Can we also, not cheer because the Warhammer 40,000 logo is on the screen? I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why I like when Mabim Band does a live episode on their podcast. They kind of cut out a lot of the uh, applause and stuff like that. Like, they'll leave a bit in, but you can definitely tell that signs it gets cut off before leading yeah. into the next joke or whatever. But. Anyways, Blackstone Fortress. I'm super excited about it. I've always loved the Warhammer Quest games. I never played uh, Silver Tower or Hammer Hall, though I've seen them play it for the the Twitch, the Warhammer Twitch stream, and it looks mm -hmm. like a ton of fun. Uh, but I did play quite a bit of the old Warhammer Quest many years ago, and that game is a fuck ton of fun. I mean, I played the kind of chintzy, like bought it for a dollar on Steam Warhammer Quest that got released on Steam a while ago. That's also like a mobile game. I've heard so that it's not so good. It's what it is. Um, <laughs> it's about a dollar. But uh, yeah, no, that's... That's neither here nor there. I'm not letting that really color my perception of this. I know Warhammer Quest is beloved for good reason. And I remember reading about it in White Dwarf back in the day, and it always looks super cool. Even in modern White Dwarf, it looks super cool and fun. So a Warhammer Quest that's in a setting I understand and love, I'm a bit more into. Yeah, it's uh, the whole collaborative board game thing is is cool. And I I look forward to that coming out so we get better looks at what the models or how about just looks at what the models are. Yeah. And uh maybe picking up a copy and playing with with some uh friends over lunch here at work or something. That's uh, is there anything so. else you want to talk about for the GW preview event? That we just pieced the fuck out the moment questions started. Oh my god, we left so quick cuz the questions are never useful. They're never yeah. good. Well, like at Adapticon, the first time they did one of these, afterwards it was like, and now we're done with questions. Who's ready to try Necromunda and Shadespire? And everyone was like going fucking nuts and they all ran out and we got to try these cool new games or whatever. And this year it's kind of like the hall was way bigger and I'm just like, yeah, we're not going to get to play Speed Freaks after this. There's only about half an hour after well, this. We, we went upstairs to the lounge and we were there for, I want to say, like an hour before anybody else started streaming up from the question hall. Mm -hmm. Like I got to imagine. And, you know, these guys, they come in and they have they are told or they've already made decisions about what they're going to talk about. You know, so yeah. you can you can go up there and be like, what new sisters models are there? Tell us about the sisters models. And like they're going to be like, we'll show you them later. You know, they're, they're not they're not going to like your amazing question isn't going to force them to be like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you've got me question asking. They're not I'm gonna going to reveal up. all the secrets. It's not going to be like guy who reveals new squad army says what? And they'll yeah. go, what? And right. you're like, got it. Nailed it. Scoop for my blog. Yeah, I remember at Adepticon I was, as I was le leaving, like the first thing was just some chud being like, Slanesh. And everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That guy said a word I know. Yeah, it's like, fuck you guys. Oh, I guess once, Wednesday night, we we went back to, uh, we didn't sit in the hotel Wednesday night. We stayed at my place and mm -hmm. hung out. And then. Yeah, yeah, I brought a few beers from Boston. Oh, you did? Uh, I ha I drank a, a couple of those so far. The There was one, the 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 space, whatever. Space IPA, monster. I really liked. And then that I liked. That was delightful. The, one of the loggers a whole lot. Not the Dunkel, but the other one. Was it the Firth? Something like that. Well, that's know. a half a... It Either was, way. It was really good. And then uh, Danielle opened up the Cezanne, and mm -hmm. I, I tried it, and I couldn't drink it. It's just It was just like, here's... It tastes like a Michael's smells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I could offload my... My beer that smells like a craft store. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. It's I'm, not my favorite like, style the, either. The beers I like are the palate destroying IPAs. That's 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 what I like. And like 
when, when it comes to the sweet and subtle flavors of a Saison or a Hefeweizen, I'm just like, oh, this banana shake tastes great. <laughs> Hey, just be happy I didn't bring you any of my strawberry sours. Uh, I can't. I can't. I just that's. I can take a sip of those, and I'm like, cool. No thanks. I'll be over here. No, I really appreciate. I really appreciate you bringing all those beers. Uh, Everything except the saison has been been delicious. So thank you. Well, thank you for hosting me and letting me hang out with your cats who woke me up at four o'clock in the morning. That's what they do. All right, Thursday. uh, We went to the. Uh, we went to the con right after lunch. I think we had an early lunch and went to the con. Mm-hmm. And uh, I promptly spent three hundred dollars to four year olds. <laughs> <laughs> what did y'all buy? I know you mentioned Slate Martina and I his dog. I bought Necromunda, the box set, mm-hmm. uh, which I didn't have yet, and now I do, and I'm very happy about that. I bought Slate Mardana in both Orlock weapon packs. Nice. And then I bought all of the Blood Bowl characters that I do not have, which was I think three or four. So now I have like a eight character backlog of Blood Bowl guys I got to paint, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm going to do after after a little bit of Necromunda love here coming up soon. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I just I, you know I wanted to take advantage of the Forge World no shipping thing. Yeah, which I guess is going to matter less now that they're moving everything to the dollar. Mm-hmm. But still, I I, f- I felt like it was probably I didn't buy the. Orlocks themselves, because I, I found those on eBay for like 10% off and free but, shipping. But I'd say you can get them wherever. So. Yeah, so that was fine. But the weapon packs, Slate Mordana, and I was thinking about buying all of the Necromunda characters, like the Whoa. Bounty Hunters or whatever. But I was like, I, I asked the dude to tally everything up for me, and it was like 180 bucks, And I was like... Ooh, I'm yeah. maybe not going to do anything else. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm holding one of those like $35 for one model on a 25 <laughs> millimeter base minis right here in my hand right now. And while I do not regret my purchase, I definitely did not buy anything at the Forge World, or I didn't buy much at the Forge World. Booth. You bought something, though. I did. Uh, I was hoping they'd have more t-shirts. They only had like six. And they're like, yeah, they're five bucks each. And I'm like, I see why they're five bucks each. These are not the cool shirts. Nope. But I did get the reprint of the old Realm of Chaos book, which is just a massive inch and a half thick tome of wizard van art yeah. essentially yeah it's awesome you're paging through it and i got to see some of it it's really cool i lo- my favorite thing is still on the cover the blood letter wearing the uh the lover boy everybody's working for the weekend headband everybody's working for the weekend that's a great song man it is a great song it was a it's a party <laughs> anthem <laughs> No, that's Loverboy, or, and Loverboy has always sucked. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, we did the Badcast Showdown, the Badcast Bad Boy Showdown. Bad, bad, bad cast, Bad Slam, yeah. Oh, boy, Campbell. So, it's oof. funny, my notes here, I have, uh, my note for the Badcast Showdown is, let's not even talk about it. No, I want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm not going to rub in your face too hard, but I want to talk about it. Uh, I put out a feeler. It's okay. It's on, rare. It's rare that you pick up wins against me, Campbell. I know, but when I do it, apparently I win really hard. <laughs> so, all right. I put out like a feeler on Twitter. I think maybe on my Cam Hammer Facebook page too, which I would be the 40K Badcast Facebook page if they'd let me change the fucking name of the page. <laughs> but I put out a feeler out. So we actually had a few people show up aside from just like we had our goon crew with us. Like we had the Sniffing Bros. And like I think Fakey showed up at some point. Um, a few. Ram listeners and podcasts like Twitter followers came over, which is pretty cool. And right as we set up our armies, I've got two, it's 2000 points. We got my knights and my guard versus your boys in black, including the midnight albatross oh. anchoring on a corner. Oh, yes. And Cra- Craig presents us with the greatest <laughs> gift. <laughs> he does. He opens this box this in front of us. And inside are these two Naruto headbands <laughs> with custom etched. Um, symbols on them for Boreal and Diomedes, the two little like mascots on the Badcast logo that we are each to wear. And I'm like, where the fuck did you get these? And <laughs> apparently they're from some person who makes these in Russia. And I'm sure they're somehow funding the annexation of the Ukraine or the thievery or next election. But I put them on and I feel power. Oh, God. I put it on. I just draw on the power of my ancestors. <laughs> and I fucking roll you. <laughs> Yeah, listeners, it was real bad. I brought the Midnight Albatross in a game against three knights and a CP farm. Uh, 
It's, it's not a CP farm. farm. They're not regenerating CP. It's a CP battery because it runs out of CP. Okay, what, whatever. It doesn't matter. And <laughs> the, well, guess what? The Knights went first. And I think you did 19 wounds to my Midnight Albatross yeah, before I, I could it, do anything. I bracketed it hard. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, at that point, like, like, I needed to, honestly, I needed to get the first turn and kill something. But even mm-hmm. if I did, all of your knights were like hidden in the middle. Of, I wouldn't have been able to. It was I was not gonna win, and then I lost real quick. I think the game clocked in at like an hour and fifteen minutes. It was an hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> that being said, um, I shot the minute albatross until its void shield was went away, which means I got to fire my thunder coil harpoon, and for the first time I ever fired it, it hits the albatross, kills it. It explodes for 12 inches. <laughs> it's right. I forgot about that. It and explodes, just, and then I roll fucking double sixes on the fucking radius. Oh, and it just wipes out everything. Yep. And uh, you do you do bloody the nose of my knights. My gallant is down to a single wound. I did take I ta- it down to one wound. Yeah, that's I, right. I table you on turn five without losing a single model. Yes. It was, <laughs> listeners, it was real bad. It was uh, real bad. I didn't even get a chance to shoot at your, like, squishy guardsman. No, why would you? No. They they do nothing. As I gathered over the course of the next following eight games or so, they don't do shit. So I got tabled in the Badcast showdown, uh, and mm-hmm. then the then the narrative, and it was fun. Like I didn't like care. It was, it was it was a fun game, and it was hilarious when my Astraeus exploded in a twelve inch radius. That was a lot of fun. I rolled three sixes in a row, which was <laughs> at the <laughs> least advantageous time possible, yeah, which I didn't repeat for the rest of the fucking <laughs> weekend. Uh, anyways, so we start the Nova narrative that evening or All that right. night, really. Well, and talk about the, before we get started in the actual games, you'll talk about the terrain for the Nova narrative. Oh, yeah, that's a that's great. Uh, go ahead. So in previous years, like, especially I remember the first year, the terrain in the narrative was like the junkiest. It was like the cast offs. It was just like the first year I was there, it was sheets of felt stapled to plywood boards with some beat up foam terrain where you could like see like visible craters where people had like stabbed it with stuff. But this year it was like next fucking level. Like Joe Capena, who runs the whole narrative, brought a bunch of his terrain from Philly. I, I actually I recognized it from his uh, from his Philly Apocalypse event. Yep. And there's some excellent stuff in there. And the subjugator of worlds himself, Chris Stover, brought like a dozen tables worth of his own terrain. 14 and, tables. And his terrain exact. is fucking gorgeous. Yes. So he uh, mm-hmm. supplies all the terrain for an event in Colorado called Valhalla, mm-hmm. which is like a which is like a gaming retreat weekend. That okay. he keeps trying to get me to go to, but it's it's kind of pricey, and I just don't have the relationship capital to to go uh, to something like that without, uh, especially without Danielle. Yeah. So uh, he he does all that, and then he, he just has a bunch of terrain that I, I think he he told me where he got it. He didn't build it; he 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 bought it. But it's amazing. Like the yeah. guy who, who the guy who does it, like apparently doesn't make terrain anymore either. So it's all oh, it's all one of a kind, custom. Ta- whole tables of terrain and they're beautiful and they're all themed boards too and they were all arrayed on fat mats and honestly i would say this year had like the nova narrative specifically like a couple tables and some, had some kind of thrown together terrain or some of the more standard nova terrain but by and large this was some of the best if not some of if not the best terrain i've ever played on at an event yeah not only that like the 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 hobby quality of the narrative is is very high anyways. There are a lot mm-hmm. of very nice-looking armies, and playing very nice-looking armies on very nice-looking terrain is always choice. Yeah, that's what the game is supposed to look like. And The Games God Workshop guys good. even mentioned how good the terrain was in the preview event. I, I think I might have missed that, but that's, aw- that's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Much respect. All right, so the narrative starts, and it's already better than last year mm-hmm. because the matchmaking thing isn't down to me <laughs> screaming out, who wants Marines? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's already better than that. We divide everybody up into four groups per team, and each in those of six people or so in each group, and, and it's up to you to figure out your you're going up against another battle group for yeah, every round. Because and, I won the Bad Cast Bad Slam, I got to name our team. The original name was going to be the Ham Slam Hokages <laughs> because we'd be wearing our fucking Nardo headbands all the time, <laughs> but those start to give you a headache after a while, so yeah. I decided to... Roll it back a little bit and just call us the Ham Slam Hardballers. Uh, which was a great name because nobody could remember it the entire campaign. Yep. So we, the uh, handball we, handmen. 
we do our first uh, matches here, and everything's going smoothly. We're we're firing off these matchups, and everybody starts their games way earlier than last year, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm gonna I want to go through my first game first because it's short. I fear we can probably bounce back and forth game to game. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so Thursday night, I play a fellow named Heath, who's like a nuclear engineer. Uh, who oh. works for the Navy, and he's really nice. And he flew in from Hawaii to come to Nova. Dang. He was telling me he had a bunch of leave that he was going to lose if he didn't, like, use it. So he was like, I need to figure out something to do. He's like, oh, I'll just fly to D.C. and play in a tournament for, but, for a weekend. But say you're already in Hawaii. Where are you going to go for vacation from there? <laughs> right? uh, but he was super nice. He had Dark Eldar. And mm. his Dark Eldar was built around three Ravagers which, with what I think are Disintegrators, so I don't remember it correctly. But th- whatever they were, I think they were like Strength 6, AP minus 3, Damage 2. Like yeah, I think that's a Disintegrator. Perfectly designed to kill Primaris Marines. Mm-hmm. And Shaboy had a lot of Primaris Marines. <laughs> and so he completely rolls me, uh, though I think I killed his Warlord or something or no i got first blood that's right uh because i i went first and like mm-hmm. killed something i forget i forget what didn't matter uh i lost that game 20 to 1 and i got Whoa. tabled i think on turn three that sounds like most of my games against dark eldar were his the skaven dark eldar no that was dave who was okay. really cool who was near me and i killed a bunch of his shit in the apocalypse game okay uh, when the astraeus actually survived but <laughs> uh, uh heath was really nice but it was it was not a nice game. He 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 rolled me, but it was over quick. So that there's that, I suppose. So, so yeah. your Thursday night game, how'd it go? This and so this I, is uh this is the first event you've brought your house Lakar knights and guard to, right? Yes. I was painting them until like four days before the event. Yeah. Um so my first game was against Spencer Connell, who is he's actually a oh, local Spencer, guy for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, he lives like a mile from me right now. Um the, the small Connell. Yes. The smaller Connell, yes. Yes, the smaller Connell. He's the one who has, he brought uh, World Eaters. Yes. But the last time we played, uh, we played locally at the Hobby Bunker down here. I uh, had my business card, my Bad Cash Biz card box, which had like 50 business cards in it, and I, mm-hmm. I forgot it. And he had, he's kept it for like months. So <laughs> he challenged me to a rematch to win those back, and we played the convoy mission. Yeah. And his, I used the 3D printed truck for my convoy truck, and he used my business card box. <laughs> What a guy! Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that guy. He, he and his brother are are excellent dudes. Yeah, they're a good pair of folks. Um, but he ran his world eaters, and they had the skull dozer in there too. Yes. Uh, which is, I, I, I was sitting there, and as he's moving, it, I'm trying to imagine how that thing, like in my mind, and like the movie that's playing in my head, I can picture a knight stomping across the battlefield. I can picture a marine diving for cover. I cannot picture this thing moving without it looking a hundred ten percent hilarious. Because <laughs> it's just this like treaded guy who can't like turn very quickly, just kind of waving his arms really angrily. But I'm um, gonna get you eventually. But, <laughs> but that thing fittingly hits like a fucking train. Yeah, it hit my knight valiant and did a bunch of damage to it. Oh no, but um. I fortunately was able to get away from it. I played a little too aggressively with my knights. Like, I definitely had them charge up and move up and get in hand to hand with why, uh, Berserkers. But why would you do Bers- that? I didn't know. I knew Berserkers were good against Marines. Because I, when I last played him, I used my Black Templars. And it was like, oh, close combat Marines versus better close combat Marines. And my Templars got wrecked. But in this game, I was like, well, I've got these big toughness eight monsters. I'll be fine. And I was not fine. <laughs> no, he it brought, doesn't fucking matter against no, Berserkers. Because they're re-rolling everything. And they're rolling a trillion oh, dice. But, That's um, the first fucking rule, Campbell. I figured Don't I could charge fight harder. Berserkers. I figured I could charge harder. I was, I mean, I still did a lot of damage when I did Campbell, charge. What's, but. what's the number one rule of playing 40k? Oh, I've chop, the shooty, chop the shooty one, shoot the choppy one. Exactly. Thank you. But what's the number one rule of knights? Always be punching. I know. It's, exactly. It's, it's it's difficult to keep all these number one rules together. <laughs> but uh, so, so how'd it go? Like, well, you've, you've got toughness eight big giant monsters and he's got a bunch of dudes with a billion attacks. Yeah. Well, punch I did. My gallant <laughs> killed Karn the, Karn the Betrayer yes! in one punch and then used uh, Death Grip to crush his <laughs> lieutenant next to him, which is fucking yes. dope. Um, I was able to move my convoy around the big rocks in the middle to safety. He tried to do the same, but my crusader just melted it. And I won the game pretty soundly on points, all being told. But all my knights were down to single digits wounds by the end. And I <laughs> barely escaped with all of them alive. And he mulched a bunch of my guardsmen, too. Oh, wow. But it was it was a very fun game. We had a very good time. And I got to take my business cards back. <laughs> you got them. All right. So let's move on to Friday a.m. How about you yeah, go first? 
Well, let's say we did not party that hard Thursday no, night because no, 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 no. Yeah, you you don't. You gotta. You can't peak this early. No, because I peaked today. Um, <laughs> so my morning game was against Chris Bimbo, who actually is also a fairly local guy. He lives somewhere else around Massachusetts, and he had a Dark Elder army that was all built using Sylvaneth models. And although they, I didn't see them until the Apocalypse game. His uh, his Dark Elder flyers were made of the Fantasy Elf Phoenixes, and they were painted all like spectrally. And his army looked pretty cool. But his list was all Rax, Monkey and Mandrakes. It was all like weird little stealthy guys who have all these fucking stratagems where they could like teleport and regenerate at the same time, which is uh, never fun for me to play against exactly. But the table was these big blocky boxes of like MDF buildings. It was the only table I played on that was not that pretty. But uh, he said they were ruins. And I was like, okay. And as I draw on a site to one, he goes, oh, ruins block my site in the first floor. And I was like, uh, do they? I think I recall that from somewhere. And I was like, yeah, sure, fuck it, whatever, man. That's So those are the, like the ITC rules. And that's not what we were playing. We weren't using those. Uh, yep. I mean, if if you, like that was Joe, I, I talked to Joe about that at one point, and he was like, like if you and your guy want to, you can, but yeah. I'm not going to force that, that that's the way anything goes. Yeah, I should have called him on that one because really, that's not the kind of event it was, and it meant that for most of the game, I couldn't do anything. Uh, I yeah, should, I remember like, I was playing at the table next to you, and I remember looking over at, at, at y'all, and it just did not look like anybody was having fun at that table. Yeah, he was just hiding his guys, and like there was one point where I was just like, hey, you're saying I literally can't do anything against your army. He says, yeah, and I just so, dude, that sucks. Um, it, and it did kind of suck. Like I tried a long bomb charge or two to try to kill his VIP, but... Um, it just was not a terribly fun game, and I don't really, it was the only game I had that wasn't very fun, and I don't blame Chris for that necessarily, like, that's probably how his game group plays it, like, you know, that's just what he probably knows, and he probably assumed that this was going to be like that, and I should have called him on that just so we could have had a bit more of a game, but it wasn't very fun, and yeah. afterwards, I was very frustrated, and I went for a run in the gym at the hotel and to my surprise the gym was empty <laughs> and i watched a very stupid show about ghosts in connecticut while i ran right so my friday a.m game was against ames who's a listener oh yeah and uh now officially i want to say friend of the show mm -hmm. uh and he brought his orcs it was a thousand point game uh and man this was a fun game uh unfortunately I'm, for I'm you jealous of the at the table to next next to me uh, having the non-fun game. This one was a fun game. It was a long game, though. because well, It was not fun for both of us. Ames brought like 100 orcs or 100 plus orcs at uh, uh, 1,000 points. Yeah. And he's very precise with how he moves them. So mm -hmm. it was a long, but he's a nice guy, so I didn't mind. It, it actually like didn't, it didn't feel as long as it took. Gotcha. If you, if you can understand. Uh, yeah. So this was great. The, it, he got the first turn. And he had like weird boys with the jump. And I was like, oh, he's going to roll into me and just, just, you know, rock the shit out of me in combat. Didn't happen that way. The Primaris Marines are actually very good at tanking orc charges. Yeah. No, good but this, I should say too. this is index orcs. We're going to see how Codex, oh, Codex orcs yeah. makes it happen. But mm -hmm. like it was like they'd come in and he'd kill like one or two maybe. And mm -hmm. then, you know, they each have two attacks and orcs kind of fold to <laughs> anything that hits them or wounds them uh so it, it it's like i had everything pretty spaced out too so we couldn't get a ton of multi-charges and then my characters waited in and like started cleaning up and so there was a lot of charges a lot of combat going on in this game uh the primaris marines did a great job of that and in coming back and scoring the scoring the objectives but the overall mvp of this game was the fucking contemptor like, my Contemptor, if it just glanced at an enemy unit, the enemy unit just, like, <laughs> melted away. He killed a war boss, Ames' war boss, in one turn on the charge. Did fucking, Jesus. like, 15 wounds to him. It was hilarious. I uh, know. I think he did nine wounds. That's right, nine, yeah. Uh, Either way, it's enough. Right, yeah. It, it, was, it was a great game, uh, super close, and I won 15 to 14. Nice. So I, I definitely... Ames is up in Maryland, outside of Baltimore, uh, and uh, Scott Horace, who we know, and uh, he and I have been talking about working on some stuff in the future and getting some games in the future. So I'm looking forward to see Ames again and uh, uh, hopefully weathering all of his charges again next time we play. Uh, nice. So I'll start with the Friday PM game. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is Friday afternoon, and it's me and Greggles in a 1,000-point doubles game. 
against Christopher and uh, this fellow Mark, who also played Tau. Now, we were on a table that was streaming the game to everybody with uh, uh, oh, the fellow's name was Aaron, but I do not remember what his company was. So like, you don't what, know how where to actually find this stream? No, uh, it's probably in my Twitter. Give me a second. I think I tweeted about it, or, or if I did, if I didn't tweet about it, I know Greg did. Okay. <sighs> sorry, sorry, I should have looked this up. I'm sorry. That's right. Oh well, uh, it'll make you feel better that uh, Ames said that he would uh, donate one dollar to the Patreon because you beat him by one point. Yeah. He, he made good on it. Oh, good, good guy. I like that guy. He's good. Okay, yeah. it was uh, it was Cool Guys Nation is the stream. That we were on, and the fellow Aaron was running it. And he was also doing commentary, uh, and so it was Greg and I against Chris and Mark. It was, and they were both had Tau, and so it was okay. my Primaris Marines and Greg's Orcs and Walkers. He had a Gorkonauts, like his custom Knight Gorkonauts that look oh, amazing. Oh God, that was uh, great! And, and against a whole bunch of Tau, and we were playing the shuttle crash mission. So Greg and I immediately realized that we're going to lose this game. Mm-hmm. We're like, we're like, fuck. Like we're, we can't get, cl- we have to get close to them to do anything. And if we get close, they're just going to wreck our shit with all their fucking charges. And like both of them are, are doing CP farms of course, like, independently of one another. Like it was, uh-huh. it was like, it, as soon as we got down to the table and like everybody started pulling out their shit, I was already like, ah, Tau, Great. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. They deployed in a corner. They castled. They did their whole castle thing in a corner. And the shuttle crash, because it's, it's, it's a mission called shuttle crash, and the shuttle comes down randomly. It mm-hmm. comes, it flies in from a random table edge. And it came in on the far table edge from them. Oh. So Greg and I just ran around all the line of sight blocking terrain so they couldn't shoot us. And we just camped the objective and tried to make them come close. Now, the game was stopped after, I think, three turns because we were running out of time. Their, their turns were taking a good long time because it was two, two fellows with a bunch of Tau and just the crazy amount of shooting that that entails. Uh, our turns were going extremely quickly because I was like, Greg, let's just get the fuck out of here. Let's just run yeah. away so they can't shoot us. Uh, and that's what we did. And uh, at the end of it, we had all the objectives. They didn't. And we won. Nice. It, was, it was not a great game. It, it was not but, a great game because there was there was a whole lot of standing around for me and Greg because our turns were super short and theirs were much longer. Uh, and there really wasn't any action. So it, it wasn't great. Uh, I, I would have... Uh, and, and, like, the, the game was ending. The round was ending. And we all thought that, like, Joe needed the table or the Cool Guys Nation guys needed the table or something. We had to get out of there. But that was not necessarily the case. We could have kept playing. Uh, and we probably... Sh- should have, but it was like, you know, it was, it was like, all right, rounds up, rounds up. And we're like, oh, shit, I guess we're done. I'm glad you got to win the classic Dan Boyd way by running the fuck away. It's, it's true. It works for me a lot. Uh, and yeah, like it was it wasn't great. It wasn't a great game. Uh, Chris is a good guy. The Mark uh, fellow, who's a really good guy and be, hanging out with Greg is always, you know, a blast. Yeah, uh, but it wasn't the best game. I, mean, I saw one picture of it and the look on Greg's face is very much like, yeah, that looks like someone playing as Tau with orcs. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just Tau. Like, uh, Tau yeah. are, it's it's like Games Workshop said, you know what, let's make, let's put all the super annoying shit in one army. So whenever anybody's playing against that army, they have no fun. Mm-hmm. And that's just like, because, like, they, you know, they have a fuck ton of rules for everything. They're not, you know how Eldar just yeah. ignores rules? Tower is the exact opposite. They have a yeah, it's a maximalist approach to rules design. They, for them, yeah. they like there's there's shit like oh I'm gonna shoot that guy. It's like okay you shoot that guy, but all of the wounds go to this unit instead. And it's just like man fuck you guy. And then he's yep. like and then he's like oh this unit all the way across the board it's got five marker lights on it. How 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 is that a thing? And it's it's just it's ugh. playing Tower's yep. the worst. Excuse me. I'll but have we more won. to say about Tower. We, we did up. one. Uh, win rather we did win uh, like 12 to 6 uh, so that was good what about your Friday p.m. game so my Friday p.m. game on my oh, doubles I'm sorry real quick real quick oh shoot uh, my last note for this it says not a great game but fuck Tau players and fuck their stupid castles <laughs> please continue very fair all right so I did doubles game with uh, David Robertson who is one of my favorite dudes who I'm always stoked to see at Nova, and he is my token Brit friend. And he brought his Ugh. gorgeous demon army, which is made up of all kinds of these, like, random demon models he just picked up at cons. Yeah, he's... So you've got, 
his oh, army was like, amazing. It was beautiful. It was they truly these, amazing. Like, they had these like blood bases where it was just, like built up layers of like blood and water well, effects you, did over you skulls see them? and stuff. He, he just he turned Games Workshop bases upside down so there were little bowls. Oh shit! I yeah. didn't know that's how he made yeah. them. Yeah, and then he and then he filled it with that blood effect. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just like brilliant little things like that, and his army is just gorgeous. Like there's this like one off garage kit monster made of skeletons that's in there. It's a beautiful army. I think I posted pictures of it. like we both post pictures of all our games. I think pretty much, um, but there's only like two GW models in there. It's just a fast corn army, and we we're up against uh, Tim with his Ultramarines and. I'm sorry, I cannot remember your real name right now, but he's his name is Feline on something awful. Oh, Evan. And he had, Evan. Yeah. Yes, Evan. And he had a guard army yeah. with like a shadow sword and pask and all that stuff. Evan's a good and player. He is a good player. He's a good guy too, but he's he's yeah. like he's like good at 40k. Yeah, but we're it was. But here's the thing: I have my knights, Davis is demons, and we're in a hammer and anvil deployment. Uh, and at uh, the far end of it is a shadow, shadow sword, sword yeah. a Sakaran Venador yeah, with yeah, a yeah. big ass laser cannon, and a bunch of other shit. Well, Sounds we got first right. turn, and I blew up the shadow sword right away nice. with my with my Helverins, I think, and we just moved up like past the middle point on the field, and it's another VIP mission. And Dave ate a bunch of the fire, return fire on the on the on you know on their turn, and we moved back up again. And now my knights, his demons, are right up in their grill. Nice, like we're up close, we're getting assaults off we're crushing the screening units because there's a lot of screening units like a lot of cheap little guard squads in the way and then it comes to their turn and he's like hey i have null zone on tigarius i'm like oh what does that do and i look at the card and i go <laughs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> so tigarius goes up next to my knight valiant who is my warlord who has a four up in vuln because i use the relic on yep. them for everything and he casts Null Zone. <laughs> he says, nope. <laughs> well, and Adios. He, <laughs> and he fails the cast. Oh, no. With Tigurius Tigurius? Fail, he But he rerolls failed psychic tests. Yeah. And he fails again. Oh, my God. Well, the Shadow Sword says, fuck it, and shoots some alts guns at my uh, big old knight anyway. I thought you killed the Shadow Sword. No, nah, not, not my turn one. I killed the Sakaran turn okay, one. Okay, Sakaran, okay. I'm parked right in front of the Shadow Sword. <laughs> um, I've been hiding from it for turn two. Yeah. And uh, fires the volcano cannon. Six wounds mm -hmm. are on my big ass knight. Yep. So I tilt the ions for a, for a three up in vuln. Uh -huh. But I have two civilians with my knight. <laughs> oh, no. And there's a rule called human shields yeah. when you have civilians. So yeah. two of these brave little civilians leap in the path of this volcano cannon <laughs> and get fucking liquefied. <laughs> And there goes like th like eighteen plus wounds on two random guys. Yeah, and I still have those four wounds left to go. And I figure yeah. he's like, "That's not noble. That's not a gallant thing to do." And I was like, <laughs> "They are serfs. They know their place." <laughs> so I have the fourth fourth ribbon to take. I pass three. I fail one. Command point. Reroll. Pass the fourth one. Nice. And Evan just jumps and goes, fuck. <laughs> like, I felt kind of bad, but I felt so good. Like, yeah. that was such like, I yeah. was like moving up with the, with the civilians. And Dave's like, are you going to, are you worried? And I was like, no, nah, I got this. I got I this. Plan. But that right there was, that cinched the game. Like, we went on yeah. to blow up everything yeah. else and eat the armies alive in combat. They tried dropping Terminators behind our lines on the, on our VIP, but we were able to throw some demons back there and just mulch them. And you know what? It was a really fun game, all that aside. Like, that was a great moment. David is always a joy to play with. Uh, Evan and Tim were both really nice guys. I've, you know, been posting, you know, back and forth, you know, with Feline. I've seen them in something awful forever now. So it was super cool to play with, like, a bunch of folks I kind of know. And it was a blast. I loved that game. Great, man. So what was your night game like? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Friday what? night, the night fight, uh, I played uh, Katie and her Eldar. Oh, boy. And uh, this game, w okay, this, uh, this is 2,500 points, so I brought my Astraeus. And she had yeah. her Wraith Knight and uh, a bunch of planes and Ionari and Guardian bombs. Like mm -hmm. deep striking Guardian defender squads who, yeah. are, who are really fucking nasty. Uh, what? Well, well, it's so it, this game was going to be whoever goes first wins mm -hmm. with all of the long, like long range shooting that was everywhere. So we deploy, I get the plus one and I win the roll to go first. Nice. And I'm like, fuck yeah, great. Uh, and then she whips out a narrative specific 
stratagem that gives her uh, plus two to her roll to go first. And I had a five. She had a four. So she has a six. I have a five. She goes first. I try to seize. I can't. And then she does 20 wounds to my stress on the womp, first womp. turn. And at that point, I'm just like, well, okay. And, you know, it was still it was a fun game. Katie's a great uh, person to play against. Uh, but it was just basically at that point, it was she's just going to, you know, piece by piece destroy my army. So yeah. I did what any reasonable person would do in that. And I got extremely drunk. Nice. Uh, uh, some some goons had come by to hang out. Alfredo, uh, Sam, Stephen, and Dan, and they were plying me with beers. And then Scott had a giant bottle of Jack Daniels, and he was, <laughs> I think, playing you. Uh, uh, no, I, I didn't play Scott till the next morning. Oh, okay. Well, he he was playing on the table next to me, uh, and he was just like, "Here, have some more Jack Daniels here." And I was. Uh, drinking Jack Daniels with cooler ice and then cooler yeah. water, yeah, which you're cutting it with cooler water. Which, which Sam, uh, safety factor on the uh, SA forums, was giving me a bunch of shit for. But I was like, it's delicious, and I'm already drunk, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I didn't get like intestinal worms yet, at least, so I'm good. <laughs> I don't, I don't even fucking care. I mean, um, that's what happens. When you don't just touch the TSA bins. <laughs> uh, but no, but she won. I got rolled. I think, uh, I mm-hmm. think it was 19 to zero was the final score. Uh, yeah, it was it was just total destruction. I didn't score anything, uh, and uh, yeah. If but if I had if I had gone first, I would have pretty easily won that game because I would have mm-hmm. taken out probably both of her flyers. Oh, and she had like fire prisms too. Yeah, nice. it, it, if if I had gone first, it would have been a completely different game. Uh, so you know, that's sometimes that's just how it goes, man. And and like yeah. that's kind of that's kind of the way of the Astraeus. You know, <laughs> if you get the first turn off then you're going to do some damage. But if you don't, then it's going to die and it's not going to be pretty. And uh, I, I, so this is the, I've played now four games with the Astraeus. One of them is Apocalypse. We're not going to count that. I've played three games with the Astraeus. And I've learned that, like, I thought that it sucked at 740 points and Mm -hmm. just big and whatever. And now I know that it sucks. (laughs) I, I'm so glad you could confirm your theories. It is, it is a bad choice. It is overcosted. It doesn't do much. And it dies on the first turn if you don't get the first turn. So What's its void shield save at? From five, turn, at up, full? five up oh. uh, then, uh, for the top profile, six up for the middle profile, and seven up for the low profile. Oh, no. So, yeah, it's bad. It's a bad choice. I, I You know, I still love it. It's my large resin sun, but yeah. it needs to come down about 200 points to get even that. remotely... Uh, competitive but yeah so that was a game it wasn't that great uh of a game of a it wasn't that competitive of a game still a lot of fun because katie katie's great but yeah. you know it's just like you know she killed the astraeus and then piecemeal this i had a couple of victories there i guess I, it was 19 to 2 or 19 to 3 or something because i did kill her <laughs> wraith knight uh with um <laughs> with hell blasters hell blasters hey guess what everybody hell blasters still fucking rule uh <laughs> yeah it was there were there were a couple of good things in there but it, you know it was just not a competitive game my night game that on friday this was also my night party so i was uh heading over to drew lt's cooler and just yes. pulling from that pretty regularly and yes. there was some good stuff in there yes and uh yeah i think fakey brought me down a beer and someone else might have brought me down a beer too like Little i was just it, it kept happening it was a good night yeah but I'm just gonna say my all right. My game was against Mike Gargalak. Mike Gurgalak. 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 Oh Jesus Christ! I'm like I read his name and I'm like, it's coming a from a guy, name. coming from a guy whose name has been getting made fun of since as far back as I can remember. Like you have the name of like one of Skeletor's henchmen. Mike Gargamel from the Smurfs. Yeah, Mike Gargantua too. The space station. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a good dude. You no, know, he's this dude fucking rules. I want to say this just outright. I. Loved playing against this guy. This was the first time since maybe fourth edition that I actually enjoyed a game versus Tau. Yes, he brings that's Tau. how good a dude this is. He's got one of those big Taus, one of those uh, big boy shoulder cannon boys. Yeah, he has the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Yeah, <laughs> um, but we took one of the snowboards, which I uh, when he got the choice of board, I was like, yeah, that one right there. And I remember this terrain exactly from Joey's Apocalypse game. Yeah, and with his army and these like cool grays and blacks and blues against my army on that snow basing meant that this game looked fucking great yeah so he castles up right in the middle in a big old ruin yep and it's up to me to crash that castle oh wait a tau player castling right oh my god yeah so as you know knights storm in the castle it's what we do yes so turn one was just me moving up using my gallant as bait ping off a few shots here and there like i did a bunch of damage to his riptide i think his did you sacrifice your gallant it, it it took a lot of fire, but it didn't die first turn. Okay. 
Um, that being said, on turn two, I was able to get a charge off with it, yes. and I was able to get it in with the Riptide. Yes. It fucking bounced off pretty hard, like it didn't do so well. But, you know, I got all up in his grill, and I'm just surrounding his units with my knights. And every time one of my knights goes down, because, of course, they get to fall back and shoot, and then everything else gets to shoot, and they shoot 45 Mark Whites. And, like, as mm-hmm. he's rolling, he's just like, hey, I apologize, this is taking so long. It's Tau, which is how they are. And he tried to explain every single thing to me, which led to me just going, of course they get that. Of course they get that. Yep. Of course they get that. Yep. Every single time. Um, and he was always just rolling with it. His uh, his wife, I think, was there, too, and she was giving him shit, being like, were you supposed to fail those saves? All that sort of stuff. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, is this a healthy dynamic? She's like, no, I do this all the time. Nice. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, and she was super cool. I can't remember her name right now, but she was really nice. And she was taking some cool pictures of the, of the game as it was going on. But every time one of my knights would die, one of my knights would die, I would explode or I'd use Noble Sacrifice and explode Hell yeah. and just cut big holes in his army. Like my Crusader died, my Warglaive dies, and everything exploded. It just, it fucking ruled. And by the game end, like, we're just trading blows back and forth. Everything's dying everywhere. At the game end, there's, like, a dozen infantry models per side. One of my Helverins and one of his commanders at, like, opposite end of the table. And we rolled in the end of turn five. And it was, it was you know, game over. Because, like, at, at turn two or so, he was like, oh, if you if you have to go, like, you know, we can peace out whatever. We can, like, call it shore. I, and I was like, dude, I'm here for this. I'll be up all night for this. So, like, at, like, 2.30 in the morning, we roll it up. Game's over. And we take the scores down, and it is a 16 to 16 draw. <laughs> oh, no. There's no other way that game could have ended than a nice. complete and oh, t- nice. total fucking draw. Because it was just a kill zone mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our uh, slaughter zone. So it was just, you know, we each killed 75% of each other's armies. I got Warlord in first blood. He got Bor- he got Warlord in line breaker or something like that. Like some, you know, secondary tertiary things totaled up in such a way. But it was a complete draw. We both scored high. It was a blast of a game. That was my favorite game from Nova. Yeah, he, he's a really good guy. I played uh, against him and uh, Dan A, who we've nicknamed Dan Alpha, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm Dan Beta, uh, who brought the 90 Termigans. Remember that? that yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I played against him and Dan Alpha, so a uh, Tau player with a bunch of shit going on and a 90 Termigans against me and Greg last year. Oh was, yeah, I think it was our Saturday night fight, and it again it went to like four in the morning. I believe that, which which is a trend, and we'll talk about that <laughs> in a bit. Uh, but no, he's a really good guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I got his number and everything because he lives in DC. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna slam some hams in the future here. Uh, nice. Let's move on to Saturday. Before we get into games, I want to talk about how we felt on Saturday morning. <laughs> <sighs> Tired, <laughs> hungover, buddy. It was. Saturday morning was rough uh, to the point where I was like 20 minutes late to the Warlord meeting. Oh, man. Because I, I had to, like, I was like, yo, I need to find some fucking tea or some Coca-Cola or in a nice long shower or fucking something because I was, ugh, it was bad. Yeah, because I was like, Dan, it's time to go. And you're like, I'll meet you down there, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, <laughs> it cool. Was, it was just not going to happen. Uh, me being on time that day, but I had a great game. Uh, Saturday AM, I played Tim Day of the Crew Shaken podcast. I'm jealous you got to play against him uh, and his ad mech. And this game did not go well for Tim. It oh. was Shuttle Crash, and this is a thousand point game, so it was four by four. And Shuttle mm-hmm. Crash on the four by four is is rough because it's very easy for it to land in someone's deployment zone, mm-hmm. and it did in my deployment zone. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Well, the other the other shuttle crash wasn't in my deployment zone. It was actually on okay. their side of the table, just the other side from their castle. And mm-hmm. we were f- way faster than they were. So it doesn't matter. Uh, so the shuttle crash lands in my deployment zone behind line of sight blocking terrain. And Ooh. he's got Admech. And Admech yeah. like to sit back and shoot. Yeah, they're slow. And I've got Primaris Marines who like to get up close. And so it was, it was, as soon as it happened, it was a foregone conclusion. Uh, and he didn't bounce back from that. Uh, Admech, they can put out a lot, crazy good amount of shooting, but they're not so great at taking shooting. Yeah, they're pretty fragile, really. Yeah. So it, it was kind of a thing where, like, I just left a squad around the objectives and just, like, rushed mm-hmm. him and, and, you know, just swept him off the board. Well, I was next to you for that game, so I did get to hear one point when I think you shot your hell blasters at his robots, and they just ping ponged all the shots back at you. Yes. Oh my god, so much died in the first turn. So like the these robots, they have like a six up, five up invulnerable save, but when you roll sixes, it sends the shot 
the damage rather right back at you mm-hmm. at, at, at whatever shot them. And so I'm like just blasting with my hell blasters, being like, <laughs> "Fucking hell blasters rule!" And then the, they, <laughs> they, and then they just, they just end up annihilating themselves. And there's also like overcharging problems, and you know, just normal hell blasters. Mm-hmm. So I end up like losing four in one round of shooting, but. Jesus. One of his castle and robots explodes and wipes out a bunch of stuff in his backfield uh, to add insult to injury. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it didn't it didn't go so well for Tim in that game. But he's such a nice guy and such a joy to hang out with that uh, you know hopefully it doesn't like sour our relationship that that he did not uh, do so well in that game because he's he's a really really cool dude. He seemed like he was having a good a pretty good time. And if you don't already listen to it, the Crew Shaken podcast. This is for the listener, for Dan. The Crew Shaken podcast is very good. Yeah, you should check out his dulcet NPR esque tones. <laughs> he does. He does a little bit of the NPR bit, uh, but he, uh, Carlo and Lavelle, Carlo and Lavelle were also at Nova, though I don't think they didn't participate. I don't think in the narrative. At yeah, all. they did the trios, but they uh, they're all really cool guys from up in Philly, uh, and we you know sometimes we see them when we go up and do events with Joe up mm-hmm. there. Uh, but yeah, really really cool guy, uh, but not necessarily a competitive game. Yeah. Eh. Oh, well. well. Saturday AM for you. Yeah, I was next to you, and I was playing against Scott Horace, who Ooh. I've, like, I've met him, I've talked to him, I know he, you know, you and him talk a lot, and he, like, writes into the show once in a while and so on, and I've always liked the guy, but I've never actually gotten to play against him, but I knew he was kind of a shrewd guy, like, kind of like a tactical, smart player. He's, like, so a was, competitive player, yeah. Yeah, so I was prepared to play a strong game, and I brought, like... I don't. I won't go too granular for most of my games, but this one there's like six models on the table, so whatever. I brought my Crusader, two Helverns, and one Warglaive, and he had a Lancer, two Warglaives, and some Guard, Ooh. and he was House Terran. So with House Terran, that Lancer can get like a 28 inch charge off, like it can be in your deployments on turn one. Gnarly. It's stupid fast. So I had a card from the narrative that let me put down an ammo dump and reel ones around it. So I just castled up on a little hill with an ammo dump and my like. Arm, my Helverins around my Crusader with my Armager just kind of screening for them. So, like, my first turn mm, wasn't that effective. I did, like, two wounds to the Lancer, and I blocked off the central pathway because it was kind of like a big... There, there was a big bottleneck in the middle of the table that you need to get through. And even as fast as the Lancer was, he couldn't get around it necessarily in one turn. So I put my Warglaive there, just kind of tie that up and shoot behind it. Well, his Warglaive charges my Warglaive. They have a shitty little sn- sn- uh, slap fight. They do some damage to each other. And he tries to get his Lancer around. So I run my Warglaive away and block off where his Lancer is, blow up his Warglaive, do some damage to his Lancer, and I just end up positioning myself so he has to keep chewing through Armager after Armager before I can get to my Crusader. And while he's doing that, my Crusader is chipping wounds off him, my Helverns are shooting up his Warglaives, and by the time he actually got his Lancer to my Crusader, it had only a couple wounds. So I did the like the last few wounds to it with my guns. It had one wound left. So my Crusader just charged the Lancer, kicked it in the shins till it died, <laughs> it, and it fell over. Nice. So the next that was on turn three because it's the game was so fast. Yeah. So um, I just spent the next two turns chasing his guard officers around, um, gunning down uh, his few guardsmen. Like he tried to tie up my my uh my knights with guards with uh guard squads and i just you know flamered or gallon cannon them on their way right, in yeah yeah um it was the only time i actually wiped entire squads with overwatch the entire <laughs> con though like it was it was good but uh he was able to bolt away with like fucking sonic the senior officer just because he would like move up run six then pick up a civilian and then do the order to move move, move on himself right, to like yeah, move yeah. back another 12 inches and he's just and pick up like, another civilian along exactly the way. Yeah. at the end of the game he had picked up every civilian on the table <laughs> which he's we'll like get to katamari damachi <laughs> <civilian. laughs> well he's got to replenish all those dead guardsmen somehow right it's a very aggressive recruitment campaign yeah but at the end of the game again it was slaughter zone i just and like with the last slaughter zone and Jesus Christ, it was another fucking tie. <laughs> it was 18 to 18 draw. Uh, he had one officer, I had my Crusader, and that was it. Wow. So it was, he's a great opponent, an all around great dude. And I was really happy we got to have a proper joust together. And also that our kind of hungover game was nice and short. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Saturday PM. Why don't you go first? All right. Um, if this is me just owning myself really hard. Oh, that's never happened before. So, yeah, I know, right? It's very out of character. So I got to choose the mission, and I got to choose my opponent. I chose I chose Jonathan and Zeldar, uh-huh. not knowing that it was a list 
tailored to fight knights because uh-huh. he was prepared to fight knights. Yeah. And they're like, Campbell, choose the mission. I was like, uh, shuttle crash. Whoops. I don't know why I chose shuttle crash. Knights are awful at objective missions. Yep. And although the army's very mobile, there's like half a dozen objectives on the table and a guy you need to escort and protect. Yep. So I have a bad mission uh, against a list tailored to beat me, and he chose the table, and it was in this beautiful orc town. The problem is it's full of buildings with intact roofs, which means his guys get to stand on top of them where yep. I can't charge them. Right. Or if I can, or I can only hit them with that stratagem that lets you hit with the, uh, you know, you can't, lets you not stomp, but you can still hit with a power fist or whatever on a, yeah. on a knight. Yeah. I then get seized on on turn one. Oh, God. And his list is all like five man ranger squads just to pop, trying to pop off mortal wounds as much as possible. Dark Reaper, Shining Spears, and a few Psychers. And turn one, he kills my Crusader. He denies it Overwatch by charging with a guy with a Banshee mask. And I fight back as best I can. But, you know, there's a third of my army because it's only a 1500 point game and I've got three knights. Yeah. So my Valiant torches the Shining Spears. Kills the Warlock with that no-fun stratagem and the Oathbreaker missile. But most of my shooting was ineffective because on top of that, they're also the craft world that you're minus one to hit. Alatoc, so, yeah. yeah, so I'm never hitting them. When I'm wounding them, they're in cover with, like, plus two to their saves. So nothing's fucking... I, I'm having a very hard time. On turn five, I'm tabled. But by that point, he had, like, a dozen infantry models left on the table. So I don't feel too bad about it. Okay. Because this was me kind of being like, okay, I'm in... A perfect storm of bad for my army. Like, this is not a good game for me. And I was able to play pretty respectively and bring him to like a six to eight loss. So I didn't do too bad, all things considered. And he's a good opponent. He's a smart player. I just, uh, I chose the wrong matchup altogether. Well, that sucks. It sucks, but also he's a nice guy. Too. It's John. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't, he's got some German last name. I can't say it, but it's John S. And he's, he's a really good guy. Yeah, no, he's a good dude. It was just a, uh, it was an uphill battle, and I could tell he was also very tired of fighting knights. <laughs> Fucking everybody was. Yeah. Uh, so Saturday PM game for me. I play our buddy Gavin, who oh, uh, Gav. with his old school Tyranids. And this I'm game, like, again. we had, we had been talking about getting a game all con, and I was like, well, let's do the fifteen hundred round. Let's do the f-. and so we do, and we again we get to play on the streaming table, the cool guys, mm-hmm. uh, uh, nation, cool guys nation streaming table uh, with Aaron and. We, Gavin, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to bring a very fun list for you. And I said, okay. And so my 1500 list, I was like, I'm going to bring all infantry and two squads of aggressors in there and uh, the chapel. And I was like, I'm just bring, bring all my new shit and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And he brought 12 zone thropes, <laughs> three carnifexes, old one eye, a hive tyrant, and three squads of rippers. Monster oh, mash. And a, and a neuro throp and three venom thropes. Oh my fucking so god! So I'm like, I'm looking at this list, and I'm like, "Holy fuck! What the hell am I gonna do?" Yeah. So we're playing Slaughter Zone too, of so course. there's no fucking running away. Yeah. Like this is this is uh, this is. Let's see what fucking happens. All right. So he gets the first turn, and it's a uh, it's uh, corners deployment, vanguard deployment. You know, the triangle deployment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I like like try to get the majority of my guys behind some line of sight blocking terrain. And he just starts rushing up with all of his carnifexes and they're getting close. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck. And then he like, he's like bringing around his zone throws. And I have to play this game where I have to have my intercessor squad screen everybody from zone throws and their psychic powers. Smites. Smites. And I'm like, so I have to play this like really difficult positioning game of like where are his zone throws going to be on uh, on his turns so my intercessors are in between my like aggressors and inceptors and characters so he can't smite them. So it was it was a mess. It was like I I'm, I'm, I was like oh god this is going to be tough. So it comes up first turn he runs all of his shit up. He gets a couple of smites off, takes a couple of wounds and I'm like okay, my turn's coming up. He's he's in range. Of the aggress or the uh, uh the the hell blasters in range mm-hmm. of the hell blasters, these carnifexes are going down and they don't go down. Oh, I, no. I I think I dropped one to two wounds, but like I Jesus. otherwise like I just didn't do much. The venom throw ups were all around causing minus ones to hit, so I didn't feel good like throwing out a bunch of hell blaster shots that kill my own guys. Like <laughs> it was it was a mess. Like uh, but I I moved I moved around and started trying to flank his like exposed flank of zone throw ups with some intercessors and a couple of characters. And uh my aggressors came up with the idea that they were going to uh be there and be stationary for the next turn of shooting. 
Like, so they rolled up, but they were with a, a screen of intercessors that they were like four and a half inches behind. Mm-hmm. So with the idea that the Carnifex is, yeah, they're going to slam in, but then I've got all these aggressors that are going to get the fire twice. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. My, nice. my intercessor screen, screen, come on, <laughs> screen to be. evaporates and the Carnifexes and old one eye uh, show up and they are like just munching all my dudes. And the hell blast on his turn. And he he gets off a couple more smites here and there and is like pecking away at my squads. Uh, and I'm like, he's just completely ineffectual shooting with my intercessors. But all right, so my turn two comes around and he's got three, like two wound carnifex. Uh, oh no, his two wound carnifex died on Overwatch. Nice. Uh, which I was like, ha ha ha. But he's still got three carnifexes and old one eye or two carnifexes <laughs> and old one eye, like right up in, in my shit. Uh, and they have killed the intercessor screen. So I'm like, fuck, I, I'm going to get smited to shit if I'm not careful here. But, so, but I don't move my, uh, my aggressors because I have to fire twice. Old One Eye is in, within range of my twice firing Flamestorm aggressors. Ooh. Yeah. With a, storm, with, with a storm of fire captain and a uh, rear wound, uh, ones to wound from a lieutenant. And nice. they fucking torch him. Nice. They, they fire twice and it's just. <laughs> And like they fucking they they I think they bring him down to one wound and like I had like an intercessor somewhere and he like mm-hmm. popped him for the last wound. Uh, my remaining hell blasters uh, and other aggressor squad, the other the bolts from aggressor, Jesus fuck, they take out the other two Carnifexes in that turn. God and damn! It's just like the aggressors like just swept. It was amazing. They're they're fantastic units. Uh, it's so and then my like inceptors come in and like start chewing up some of his zone throws and it's starting to look pretty good for me. Mm-hmm. All right. So turn three happens. Psychic phase turn three. And he like pulls out a stratagem and he's like, I'm doing this. And it's the stratagem that if he's got three squads of zone throws, he can pick a unit. And like, if he rolls, uh, a, a pick a unit and then any unit within three or six inches, something like that. Like he gets to roll like three D three mortal wounds uh. on a roll of four or higher. It's like called psychic storm. I don't know. I forget what it's called, but it's some Jesus. like stratagem and it, 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 it takes away the psychic phase. Like it's, that's it. And it's is a huge stratagem or is it a narrative stratagem? It's a, it's a tyranny stratagem. Okay. Uh, it's this huge thing. And he whiffs. What? Every, you have to roll four up to get it to give 3d3 mortal wounds to a unit and he, like he puts it right in the middle of my army and it would have been like everything that would have been game over it would have been game over and he whiffs completely not a single jesus. four up is rolled and he even uses a command point reroll jesus not a single four up and i'm just and i'm, I'm sitting there i'm like I'm you're like, there holding your breath the entire time shit. i'm guessing and he's and, and he wasn't like to his credit he wasn't even frustrated he was like oh, it happened uh <laughs> so like and at that point, like it's he sort of spent his, uh, as as we would say later in the late night game, he he was uh, uh, blowing on his laundry, his load of laundry, uh, and oh, he God. didn't at that point like his all of his guys were like a little too close to mine, and I had just too many shots and mm-hmm. he, all those zone throws off three up vulnerable saves, but doesn't matter when you're just shooting bolters at them anyways. Yeah, and they're only toughness four, so it, it turned into. A kind of a route after that point for him because I still had a good amount of my stuff and a lot of uh, shooting left over. Snatching victory from the jaws of defeat? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I got really lucky that he whiffed on all those mortal wounds, but it was still it was a great game because Gavin's such a nice guy. Yeah, no, he's he was my favorite game of Nova last year, I think it was. It was I think it was last year, and it was, again, a very tactical, very nuanced, very and like mindful game in between all the uh all expo- all the exploding brain bugs and stuff. I'm just so excited that like he brought 12 zone throws to a game. That's insane. And they're all the walking old metal zone throws yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I've rules. never I've never played against like that kind of list before. And honestly, I was like, oh, Bob, I'm I'm these all these smites are just going to murder me. Yeah. Uh, but fortunately, I was smart with my planning. So I love his paint scheme and basing scheme because it works just as well on old models as well as on new models. Yeah. And they weirdly yeah. blend together really nicely. Yeah, no, but he's such a great guy. And, uh, he apparently like comes down to Alexandria every now and then. And so he's going to, mm-hmm. next time he's in town, he's going to call me. We're going to go get the pint. Uh, that sounds wonderful. So we're coming up on what I think was my favorite game of the whole con, though. I don't think was your favorite game. Oh my fucking the- God. <laughs> so this is the 1500 point doubles and these 1500 yeah. point doubles games are, interminable like they take 
they never forever. End. And it, it's good that it's the night fight game because we can just go until it's done, which we did. And it took, I think we stopped playing at like three or three thirty. It was three thirty. Yeah, it was it was fucking brutal. But we played Scott and Katie, and like this game was nuts from top to bottom. We right. oh oh dude. <laughs> They had so okay so it's my I bring my all infantry fifteen hundreds you bring your all knights no no you brought mm-hmm. uh, guard uh, I brought guard yeah. with them because you're like we're going to need to be able to hold objectives and yeah. stuff like that he and brought he, his lancer and a couple of armagers and guard and she brought mm-hmm. her inari clusterfuck yeah uh, and they have a stratagem that allow that gives them oh yeah I remember that that gives them plus three for first turn. It's a narrative strategy. It's a narrative card. strategy yeah. uh, that Joe handed out to them. Uh, and they use it and they roll a one. Yep. So they have a four. And what do we roll? A five. mother fucking five. And so, and we are like already screaming at the top. We got our headbands on. Uh, yeah, we have, we, we, <laughs> we're drawing on the power of our ancestors. We high five them, it's, pretty sure. Like it's, it's already fucking nuts. Uh, and this deployment, there's this huge hill that blocks line of sight in the middle uh, that it's the knights are hiding behind. Good, it's very good to hide knights behind. Yeah. I end up uh, striking from the shadows with something like six units. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, and uh, it's it's just great. Like, a strike from the shadows, we get the first turn, they can't seize, and, like, I'm immediately, have got two aggressor squads and characters just, like, clear out all of Scott's guardsmen and tie up his knights in combat. It, well, mm. they avoid the Lancer, but they tie up and do serious damage to the Armagers. He's got two Warglaves uh, there. And and your guys, you just sort of spread out and, like, get objectives and prepare. Uh, I hold objectives. I pick up a few civilians. But this, I do some pot shots here this and there. Fucking but. Game, this fucking game swung back and forth. So the first, turn one, it looks like we're going to dominate. Mm-hmm. End of turn one, after their turn, like, there's nobody left on, like, all the all of my striking from the Shadows guys, all dead. All dead. <laughs> to a man. <laughs> right? And, like... Uh, I had a stratagem though that I could recycle a narrative stratagem that I could recycle a unit and I used and I used it. To, and what was think, this? What was that stratagem it was called? called? Bad at forty k. <laughs> <laughs> it had my name on it. I took a picture. It's on my Twitter if you guys want to see it. Uh, but yeah, this game w- swung wildly back and forth. Yeah. And uh, see, the problem is I was sick at this point and I was getting sicker. And I was super tired on top of that. And I was just, I was going and going and going the longer it went. I was just like, are we done yet? Right. Can and, I go home yet? We, we played it well, but they played it well too, because they're both very yeah. good players. So it was a very tight game. But I'm, this is one of, I'm so proud of this moment. Uh, we had been given the stratagem uh, called Saboteur. And mm-hmm. if a vehicle is attached to a civilian, like you can blow up that civilian and cause 3d3 mortal wounds to the vehicle. And this was there specifically to counter knight armies. Yes. And so Scott, like, so we, we've got one of your knights by a civilian. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, I want to, I want to, and, and he's, and one of Katie's planes is by two civilians. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, I want to kill that plane, but I want to use a saboteur card and I have to trick Scott into, into attaching those two civilians to that plane so I can use this saboteur uh, thing and and so we've got a knight by a civilian and I'm like hey Scott he's like yeah I'm like can we attach vehicles to civilians and he's like I haven't been doing it all campaign but you know maybe and this is like I know that I can I know it <laughs> and so I'm like I'm gonna go ask Joe real quick so I walk over to Joe and I say hey Joe I'm fake asking you a question about civilians. So do me a favor and just nod your head. And he's like, okay. And like nods his head. And I come back and I'm like, I tell Scott and I'm like, yeah, you can do it. And so he immediately, without asking Katie, immediately says, oh, I'm attaching civilians to this plane. And I'm like, oh, are you? And I'm like, you sprung my trap card. You played right into my trap card. (laughs) And I show him the thing and his face goes from like disbelief to amazement to horror like like <laughs> right off the thing and uh we roll three to three the plane has five wounds left we roll we roll the uh, perfect dice, five and we roll five uh and like the plane's gone <laughs> it doesn't explode but it's gone and katie gives scott the most withering look like i've ever seen scott and katie are engaged to one another yeah. uh and, and and like i'm <laughs> losing like cry laughing losing my shit scott is cry laughing losing his shit i don't know how hard you were laughing because I couldn't pay attention to anything. And this, we were laughing for probably 10 minutes. Yeah. Like just, just because Scott was so, so like, so like, like mad yet impressed at the amount of bamboozling <laughs> that just happened. And I, I like, it's the best acting I've ever done. 
I'm not a trained actor, <laughs> listeners, obviously, but it, I deserve an award for that shit. Palm to or or something. Because <laughs> it was amazing. The plane dies. Uh, Katie's real mad. At Sam, yeah, but not is. at me. <laughs> she's mad at Scott. She's mad at Scott. He's like, my relationship's in jeopardy <laughs> yeah. because of you, Dan, but I'm still impressed. <laughs> yeah. So it was a fun game because there's, you know, it was funny shit like that was happening. It was a very close yeah. game. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad we could play a couple's game together. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it came down to the end and we're like at end of turn five oh. and Scott's like, Scott's it's they're playing for a draw like we've got our max score they're at 19 and Scott's like well I could get line breaker but I I don't know and I'm like I'm like well I mean I don't think you can and he's like well why don't we just roll a four up and if I get a four up I get line breaker we tie if not you guys win by one and I'm like no I want to play it out. Uh, and at this point, I know that you, I was like, no, you, you were not interested in this whatsoever. You're just like, God damn it, Dan. But I, but I don't know, man, when I get late at night like that, like I, I, I want to, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get defeated by the game. I understand that. And I get that when we had like that doubles game last year that went for like five and a half hours. Cause I was at least in the middle of the day. But this was just like, I was so fucking tired. Like, you were playing my models. By, yeah, no, by the you, time 3 a.m. rolled around, you, had checked you out. were playing my models. Uh, but yeah. we ended up going seven turns. Uh, and I didn't know. Yeah, my notes for this say, Dan, you take this one because I remember <laughs> very little of this game. We ended up going seven turns, and Scott, like, and like Katie has left at this point. She's she just oh, left yeah. the table. Uh, Scott has, like, managed to soul burst, like, uh, what's her name? Ivraine? No, oh, like a farseer into our deployment zone at the bottom of seven for a uh, uh, for a tie, a twenty to twenty tie, a max score to max score tie. When I when I brought the sheet over to Joe and showed it to him, he's like, "You're kidding me, right? Are you serious?" I'm like, "I wouldn't lie to you, Joe." Yeah, it was an amazing. Most, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I know that you were done with it by like I, two, but I was I, I was, was having it, fun until two a.m. Yeah, although like the fact that I got to tie against scott twice in one day because <laughs> like i yeah i, I you know just narrative like uh, apocalypse aside i tied three games <laughs> you did i tied you more did. games than i won or lost <laughs> what did you, you went like uh two two three two two and three yeah yeah i, I went uh four two and one yeah which i mean i did i th- i thought that my shitty primaris marines were gonna get rolled every game I thought I was going to win more. <laughs> so, Joke's on me. All right. So Saturday's done. The apocalypse starts. Sunday morning, I wake up oh, and I, dude. I don't know about you, dude, but like we woke up on time and everything, but yeah. I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, can we, is there any way we can not be there? Can we not? But, and I was th- but we, but we like, couldn't not. We had to. We have to. So we went and uh, the apocalypse, like apocalypse is is apocalypse you know it's it's you can't really plan for it. you can't you just go and fucking play it and it's a mess but it's it's still a fun mess especially when it's joe and colin who well, have figured out a very good way of you know keeping everybody on time and i actually felt that this apocalypse didn't feel like it went super long no it didn't um it went really ra- it went really i think we I think finished i think we finished like half an hour early yeah, I think that happened last year too. Yeah, well, uh, I only remember one turn where I heard them like calling, like dice down. And I heard like someone groan. So I, uh, like, I just made our deployment map for our side. Yeah, because I, I didn't really feel like letting the other warlords argue about it. Yeah, because there, there had there was a couple of I don't want to say tryhards, but <laughs> enthusiastic players on our side, and yeah. uh, I was, you know, I. I was totally like fine with enabling them like during warlord meetings or whatever. Like, uh, cause so, uh, listeners, the Nova narrative, like there's like a big overarching campaign that we're doing and, you know, we're planning stuff out. And my feeling has always been, let's just do the thing that makes us have the most fun. Uh, we're, and some people like to get into the nit- nitty gritty of the strategy or whatever. Uh, and the reason I took over as faction leaders, because one year, like our leaders were super into the nitty gritty of the strategy to the point where it wasn't fun. And mm-hmm. I was just like, fuck this. We're going to ball so hard and we're going to play and we're just going to do whatever the fuck we want. And it's going to be rad. And it was, it was great. Uh, uh, this year we had some warlords who were getting into the nitty gritty and I was like, cool, just go ahead, fellas. But just remember, you know, we're just, we're having some fun. 
But also because of the way the narrative is broken up this year, where you didn't have one person telling everyone what to do, you could have like this little sub factor, sub faction right, that's right, kind of yeah. they're try, trying hard and they're trying to do things. Right. But they're not the only people involved. It was cool. Yeah. So I, th- I think it worked out for everybody best than mm-hmm. that. Uh, but for the apocalypse, I didn't want to fucking hear it. I was tired yeah. and I didn't want to listen to people argue for half an hour about deployment. So I was just like, I just drew the deployment map. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, like I. I'm going to cop to this. I put myself in the corner away because I didn't really feel like doing too much. And you decided to throw me to the fucking dogs. Well, so somebody had to. <laughs> yeah, somebody you had to. You and Kevin so- were like over on the edge. And yeah, you're, you're, all your shit's going to get destroyed. But that means maybe it's a shorter game. Yeah, because it was two L block yeah, well, like deployments. Well, so that, that deployment have- system... I, I next I I, I want to that's one of the things I'm going to talk to Joe about. It's just like whoever whoever is on the crook of the L on the mm. opposing team it just gets murdered by three or four yeah. different armies at once. Uh-huh. And it it kind of takes the fun out of it for him. Yeah, no, that happened to the people I was hanging that right. next to because I had like Will and uh, Kevin between me and them, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. So yeah, the apocalypse went. Uh, it was fine. You, uh, we got thrashed. We'd been getting thrashed all campaign, and we mm-hmm. current we continue to get thrashed in the apocalypse. And you know, it was fun. It was fun to. It was really just like everybody's there. You're hanging out. Yeah, and sometimes it's, rolling some dice. Yeah, but like, you know, we can't go over the turn by turn of this because it's impossible to keep track of that. But what were like your couple of highlights of the actual game uh, that you got to do? My Astraeus lived mm-hmm. uh, after after it got killed and put back on the table. Well, Chris was wrong about ranges, and I was actually fine with keeping it off the table. Mm-hmm. But he was like, no, you got to put it back on. You got And I'm like, ah, fine, whatever. Uh, I only lost three models. And the, uh, no, I lost five models to uh, plasma overcharging. Mike, good job. That was it. That was, I, I didn't. But then again, my army like just didn't do anything. Yeah. So, and, and honestly, dude, I was so tired. I was fine with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I think we need to do different deployment style for next year. That's one of the feedback items I'm going to bring to Joe. That's fair. Uh, so did my get, highlight... Did you get fully tabled? No, I had my Primaris Psyker left alive. Nice. He was the hiding... The Penitent. Yeah, the Auto Penitent had decided to run off and carry its little caged Psyker into an objective where Jason was hanging out with all his uh, all his pox walkers. I did get some really good kills that game. Um, Kevin got Magnus down to one wound and I just swatted him like a fly. Nice. And finished that one off. I harpooned a brass scorpion and it exploded which then caused my knight valiant to explode and that was dope as hell uh, i was opposite i can't remember his name but he's will's son with the, like the crazy cool chaos army with like the noise marine knight with the smoke that yeah, comes out of its yeah, mouth yeah, and all that yeah, stuff yeah. everything just blew up around him and he's like i just lost 700 points of my army to other people's vehicles blowing up near me <laughs> and i'm like sorry man that's sorry. apocalypse. that's apocalypse but I also did using, um, I borrowed your Shadow Sword and your Bane Blade. You did. And I was able to kill a Warhound Titan, which was super cool. Very nice. It did not explode, unfortunately, but it was still cool. Yeah, we had a 45,000 points on each side, I think. Yeah. By turn three, I was basically tabled. I was down to a couple infantry models who were just hiding on objectives. So I just went into the dealer area for a while. And while I was down there, I forgot to mention this earlier. I did buy, like, a little bit. I found the weird pyromaniac from old, old, old Necromunda, who's got, like, this wild hair. And was this, that like, the uh, Toledo Game Room bins? Yeah. You want to ta- talk about a bacteria situation. Oh, my God, right? <laughs> uh, well, that's why I was going through, like, the one just called, like, Miscellaneous Warhammer, because I'm like, no one's going through this one. <laughs> but uh, There I were got a couple weird... really good finds this year Dude, from, well, like, our I friends. Got, yeah, I got that Pyromaniac for, like, 12 bucks, which is awesome because it's a great model. And I also got something called the Blessing of Sigmar, which was this yes, limited edition yes. fantasy semi-diorama thing that if I, that thing might as well be made of gold if you look on eBay it's like, for it. It's like you're the, you're the miniature ball pit whisperer. <laughs> I call that, I call that place the miniature ball pit because it's, that's a good thing to do it. It's gross, like a ball pit. And it's, I'm just ugh. in there panning for band-aids. Yeah. All right, so the Apocalypse game. It it went. We lost. Uh, the campaign, I have it written down here. Campaign, we got thrashed. Joe will have to retcon the story to make our faction relevant again. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> we we lost yeah. we lost so bad that like like it was it was it was it was hilarious. Like yeah, uh, we, we it, lost really bad. So in the survey, in the survey, he was like, Do you want me to retcon it or do you want us to do a different story now? What do you think? 
Honestly, I think doing a different story, I, I I feel like bending over backwards to make this work is just difficult, and he's going to have to keep doing it. I think it might just be easier to write a new story. I think so, that being, yeah. That being said, I do enjoy the years and years of entrenched... Um, it's basically red team versus blue team levels yeah, of uh, yeah. levels of no, I do kinda, rivalry. I, I kind of like that too. I do like that's yeah, the problem. It's, is like it's, we'll it's going to be very hard to care about the story. I'm sure, I'm sure when that, there's that, so much built in shit. I'm sure that people are going to have opinions about that. So we should. Oh yeah. You know, maybe wait to see what other people want to say. I personally don't really care either way. I just want to. I just you know I just love the narrative as an excuse to get together and screw around and roll some dice. Yeah, with a wonderful group of people. Yeah, so I have a couple of notes here. The It was better than last year. Matchmaking was improved. The games, like matching up, uh, like skill levels and stuff, I thought was uh, well done. The missions were still a ton of fun. Uh, civilians need a rework. They're currently off this sort of uh, half-assed 7th edition character rule set, yeah. which doesn't work uh, for, for uh, this. Though I think Joe has realized that. And, yeah, he did. And uh, I think he's going to be changing that for next year. Uh, and uh, my big thing that I want to do for next year is, so right now you can buy each round in the registration process. Mm-hmm. I-, I want to make Day Fighters, like the, the day games, like you buy that set of games. Yeah. Not not like anybody can come in, but like if you're going to be on, on, on that, you're like the Night Fighters are supposed to, Night Fighter rounds are supposed to be the a la carte rounds when we have unlimited tables and unlimited time. Yeah, as opposed to day fighters, where we have limited time, limited tables. I think that should be the core group there. And I will tell Joe again: let's let's do all team games at night because they take the longest. Yeah, because I had to get called out of my team game, or you you came down, and you're like, dude, you've got to finish your game. We have a warlords meeting. Oh, that's right. Yes, because you guys yeah. were going real long on, on yeah. that. But it's fucking team games. What are you going to do? So yeah, mm-hmm. I I still I give it an A, uh, a grade or a ten out of ten. Again, it was a ton of fun, and uh, I can't wait till next year because I'm doing I'm it doing a, it again. I'll give it a nine point nine out of ten, so it has room to grow. There you go, very nice. So uh, before we uh, before we pack it up here, uh, oh, we got to talk about our accolades, the Badcast Supremacy Adjacency. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we both came very close to being best at something, <laughs> but did. not quite getting there. <laughs> but not quite. Uh, so Campbell and <laughs> well, we both got recognized in the top three of our of the humanity faction. Yes, not uh, not I, one. No, not one. No. But the top three. But we were both in the top three. Campbell, you were second, and I was third, if I yes, remember correctly. For which I took home a lovely dynamic contemporary dreadnought. And I actually, I think I got the better prize. I got the new ruins set. The second yeah, Imperialis. Like, I was kind of like, I wish I lost a little harder <laughs> so I could have gotten that. Uh, so we got second and third there. And then I was told by the judges after that I was second place for painting after Dave Robinson. Yeah. And I was chatting with him too. And I was fourth place for painting uh, after it was like Dave Robinson who won with his demons, which yeah. he fucking deserves. He, Those are gorgeous. Especially because he got snubbed last year. Yeah, and then your Raven Guard, who are so neat and so clean and so crisp, and you do black so well. Thank you. And then Craig's wonderful Rainbow Warriors, where they, again, are a really crisp, clean color palette, then with a beautiful rainbow gradient on oh, yeah. every single model. He has completely killed it with the Rainbow Warriors. Uh, there yeah. are pictures on my Twitter of them. He's got a Twitter, at Master Slowpoke. Uh, he was uh, he was on in our last episode, in episode 36, mm-hmm. uh, with him and Jason. Those Those things are amazing. And then your yeah. army, dude, a house Ikea, as everybody was calling it, looks mm-hmm. fan-fucking-tastic. Thank you. Yeah, I got in fourth place. I talked to Greg about it a little bit, and he was like, yeah, I couldn't really judge because, you know, I know you, but um, apparently he was like, it looked a little rushed. I'm like, that's because it was. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe you can fine-tune it for next year. I figure I can either fine-tune it or bring something different. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just know I'm not going to be painting a new army the month before the con again. That's a, I'm not doing that to myself That's again. a good idea. I've promised Danielle that the 2018-2019 con season is uh-huh. I'm not taking on big projects. Yeah, no, she was I'm getting not doing, frustrated with me with how much painting I had to do for Adepticon and then Nova. Yeah, I'm not doing that to my relationship yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. Don't. All right, so uh, before we pack up, let's. Uh, I want to do some acknowledgments. Yeah, and, let's, let's talk a little bit about, like, because, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff we did that wasn't just gaming, too. Right. Like, we got to hang out with so many we cool people. We spent time with a lot of amazing people, and I have a list of people here that I put down uh, that I am proud to know. Because, mm-hmm. like, these are really good people that uh, without them, Nova wouldn't be the same, or it wouldn't even happen. Uh, and it's 
it's just such a great community. Like the the I think the most important award we received, Campbell, was the fact that uh, we got to expand our network of friends and hobbyists uh, and make this event like truly, truly stand out as the highlight of at least my year. Oh, no, for me, it is, too. This is becoming more and more like a family as it goes on. And it's just dysfunctional and alcoholic as my family. So that's great. (laughs) Well, we've with this podcast, you know, it's it's been great that people can like sort of get in our heads and sort of like, you know, know us as uh, through as the year goes on. And so when we see them at cons, you know, we're just sort of keeping the conversation going. Yeah. And the network of friends and stuff that that we had uh, and that now we have uh, is, is amazing. And we met a ton of new people this year. Uh, but let me, let me go through this, uh, this group real quick of people that I'm, you know, very, very proud to know. And I'll start sure. with Mike Brandt, uh, who, you know, is the guy behind Nova. He doesn't really plan any of it anymore, but he's the, he's the guy that runs it. It's his mm. show. Uh, he's the and, face. and he's a, a very good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I have a ton of affection for him uh, and just it, he's always been super gracious to me, like inviting me uh, to like social things and really treating me like a part of his family. And I, I can't thank him. He doesn't listen to the podcast, so he'll never fucking hear this. But I can't <laughs> thank him enough for all the incredible work he does in setting up this honestly, this holiday that I get to celebrate every year. Uh, I also want to uh, shout out to his mom, Lori Brandt, who is instrumental in organizing everything that happens with Nova and just one of the sweetest people I, I know. And she uh, has basically just welcomed me into, into their family uh, and, and makes me feel extremely loved and appreciated whenever I'm around her. I'd like to do a shout out to uh, whichever dog in the lounge belonged <laughs> to one of the brands and I got to pet and they were a very good That's girl. Kai. Yeah. Uh, the little shaggy puppy. Did you see yeah. that one? That's Mike's dog, Kai. Yeah, he's he's really it's, cute. It's a good doggo. Uh, I want to thank uh, Owen Best and Bridget Riley, uh, two great friends of uh, friends of mine and friends of ours. That uh, you know, Owen is on the board of directors at Nova, and he does a lot of the planning. Bridget ran the uh, board game room, which was a ton of fun this year. Uh, great people, just great to be around, and and just makes it, their presence just makes everything so much brighter and happier. Uh, I want to uh, thank Dewey Haynes, who is like the operations manager for Nova and who is the one in charge of setting up all the tables, breaking everything down and doing all the fucking legwork. He's a he's a big, strong man. And without him, none of this shit would happen. And I'm extremely proud to know him. Uh, I want to also want to do a shout out to Doug Johnson and Todd Kincaid of Table War. These guys. I, so not only do they make fantastic products over at Table War. Uh, but they're both just stand up dudes, just super nice, super them. friendly. And to the point where, you know, we're, we've got our little crew at a table, whatever, Doug and Todd will come over and just hang out with us. And it's yeah. so cool that they get to make it out from the West coast and from Hawaii, uh, to, to the East coast for these events. Cause they are just, just the cream of the crop when it comes to people. I love those guys. They also sponsored some of the taps and some of, and they host like a, keg night or something like that in the lounge up there so you can thank them for some of the wonderful beer you're drinking including those four dollar fat tire drafts which are an absolute good oh oh yes uh chris stover he brought 14 tables worth of terrain to nova hobby hero right there amazing guy uh katie bishop and scott horace helped out with with nova and just tons of fun to hang out with and great opponents uh greggles of course not only doing painting judging but playing in nova open and hanging out and being just the sunniest, happiest dude around. I, I, I love that guy. I really do. Uh, Dave Robinson, who we've talked about how much we uh, uh, love his painting, uh, but he comes over from the UK. I, I, he was there on, uh, I think, Monday night or Sunday night, one of the two, after I got out of the painting class, and he had just finished his transatlantic flight, and he was a little frazzled, but he looked so looked excited like, to be there. He was so excited to eat bison. <laughs> oh, at the steakhouse, yeah. At, at that steakhouse. And I went there, and I'm like, this is a, this is a hamburger it's, that's drier it's not, than it's normal. It's not good. Well, it's not you bad, know what? but it's not you better. Don't, you don't get him out there, but no, you know? I absolutely love that guy. He has been a friend from the moment I met him at my first Nova, and I can't wait to see him next year. Uh, I want to shout out to John Steining, who was in the uh, painting group with me. He also painted the Warlord Titan for the Nova Open Charitable Raffle. Uh, he's just a great guy. Just tons of fun to be around. One of the most interesting people you ever meet. 
Uh, and I want to do a shout out to uh, my beautiful fiance, Danielle, for letting me do this ridiculous shit and <laughs> spend so much time away from her. I'd like to do a shout out to Joe and Colin for running this whole fucking narrative thing. Yes. Like they they have like a laminating machine and a sleeping bag behind that desk they're at. They were just there all day, all night, every single day yeah. for all of these games. Those, those and, guys, they work so fucking hard. And they do a trios tournament right before the narrative starts too. Like they do not stop. No. And I know a lot of these missions are ones that he they workshop over at Philly with the uh the page group and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's still such an undertaking to do this every single year at Nova. And I'm glad they've been able to kind of, um, what's the right word here? Like delineate, not, uh, they've been able to get people to do some of the more work for them. Like delegate. organize games, delegate. That's yes. the word. I'm glad they've been able to delegate a bit more because it gives us more power to, as players to make the games, how we want them to be. But it also takes a load off their shoulders when they've already got so much to do with all the scoring and judging and, organizing on top of everything yeah so uh i also campbell want to thank you and i'm not cool. not even joking uh you you have helped to make this nova experience really special for me so thank you so much bud well thank you for letting me crash your place thank you for deep talk deep talks of jack candy late at night <laughs> uh, <let laughs> and me, uh for introducing me to this entire scene yeah let me give some quick shout out to some goons that we met uh sam steven alfredo dan uh and then gary kevin and will who were playing in the narrative with us uh not to forget our inner circle friendos of craig jason and fakie uh like y'all have helped helped make this an incredible nova i hope to see you guys at adepticon or at next year's nova or something i know that uh like alfredo was coming up from pennsylvania i know uh, Sam was coming up from Texas, like, hey, Chicago, center of the country. You guys should make it. Um, like, any any I, other shout outs you want to ha- uh, throw course. out there? I'll do a shout out to uh, Badcast Superfan Sydney <laughs> and his, who is, Sydney. he's an absolute, he's the life of the party. Sydney and, and fucking floor boy. His, his, t- <laughs> <laughs> his tiny drunk diabetic pal Christian, oh, which are, God. this is highlight of my fucking life here, where um, he's like, Hey, this is my friend Christian. He's never listened to your podcast before, but he's hanging out with us. I'm like, all right, cool. And he's like, and Christian's like, why don't I have a, a shirt like you guys have? Because we're all wearing bad cast bad shirts. And I'm like, get me a fucking Sharpie. And I'm in the bar drawing a bad cast bad shirt you, on the bar. You did a on very a nice job. Except I forgot how the text formatting went. Because <laughs> it, right, it, it was on the badge, if you haven't seen it, it says 40K bad cast on the top. Or, it says the 40k on the top and bad cast at the bottom yeah. and i wrote the 40k bad cast across the top and the bottom was blank so i just wrote extra legit shirt <laughs> and then uh we both signed it um yeah. on on his beautiful body yeah and we posted that on twitter oh um the other day and that was oh that was that was a wonderful moment it really was um, i also speaking of bad cast bad shirts i really like the moment when we're in the lounge and we're with ames and uh, shout out to Ames. He's a swell <laughs> dude. You know where we're going with this one. And he's like, he's like, he's wearing a bad shirt. I'm wearing a bad shirt. Um, one of his friends wearing a bad shirt. And you're wearing the shirt, too. And he's like, oh, you're Dan. That's awesome. Let me get a picture with you. And the three of you are up there. And I'm sitting there right next <laughs> to you. Going, right like, what am I? Next to me. I'm right next to you. And I'm like, what am I, chopped liver? I'm the other guy in the fucking show. You're wearing a shirt I drew. <laughs> it's your and he's like, oh, design. oh. I was like actually a little bit mad about that because I'm right uh, fucking there. My name tag. It right only there. would have been better if he had asked you to take the picture. I wish he had because like <laughs> the self-imposed Schadenfreude there would go like to the yeah. next level if that was the case. But I know he didn't mean any dig by it. Was, he's a really swell guy. He came with us to dinner, both dinners that oh, no, he's, uh, my yeah, guy he's, had with, he's a really cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. The dinners I got to have narrative and goon crews were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Power 10,000. Power 10,000. <laughs> India's finest beer. Wor- the best named worst beer I've ever tasted. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Adepticon 2019, I'm going. You're going. If you're, you're, I'm going. If you're listening, uh, meet us. We don't know. They haven't put out the events for, for that yet. We don't know what we're going to do, but uh, we know we're going to be there and we know we're going to be hanging out. So, listeners, meet us if there's enough of if enough of us are going then we'll organize some sort of meetup or something and can't wait nova 2019 campbell you in always you know me all right i'm in too start painting now <laughs> jesus <laughs> fucking figure it out now oh all right well i'll conceptualize an army just in time for it to be underpowered next year all right guys i'm dan boyd he's campbell glaughlin we're the 40k badcast and i'm still sick <laughs> <laughs> this cartoon. Thank you.